It's Florida A&M and Georgia Southern. Last time these two programs met in the playoffs, 1997. And it was Florida A&M losing in that one, 57 to 37. We're underway from Statesboro. Hakeem Ford on the return. Gets it out to the 33 yard line. And we'll see the Georgia Southern offense and folks you are going to see a special running back this afternoon. We've already talked about him but you cannot say enough about number three. Adrian Peterson is just a man. I was so struck by his performance in last year's national championship game in Chattanooga playing with a bad ankle playing in the mud. He still rushed for over 170 yards. Toughest performance I've seen since Emmett Smith playing with the separated shoulder against the uh, New York Giants. Eagles open up at it. They're on 34 yard line. And it's Peterson on the first play. Well, check that, Dwayne. I'm not quite sure that was Peterson. That, that was, was Mark Myers. Mark Myers on the first play. They threw us a curve. They did. And what they did was fake the dive, Dwayne, and pitch to the outside. Throughout the course of the MEAC conference schedule, running to the outside play, right into the FAMU defense. Everybody buys the first option there. Quick pitch to the outside. Great recognition by Revere. Ford gets into the secondary, and it's a foot race down the sidelines. Takes it down to the 37 yard line of Florida A&M. First and 10 for Georgia Southern. Pitch again to Myers over the far side. Another first down. Sequan Dow drags him out of bounds. Oh, Florida A&M in the middle right now having a little bit of trouble there. A magician with the football is Revere, and Florida A&M just simply can't keep up. Fake the dive once again to Peterson. Find Myers coming to the outside. Again, once he gets into the secondary, he's able to make big plays. Already a wrinkle in the offensive approach for Paul Johnson and Georgia Southern. I think that's the counterpunch, just setting it up a little bit. You'll start seeing Peterson a lot more down here inside the red zone area. Myers, a junior from Powder Springs. Ball at the 19 of Florida A&M. No score opening moments of this first round playoff game from Statesboro, Georgia. And there's Peterson. And there's the All-America. Peterson, touchdown Georgia Southern. Boy, that's an official job, Dwayne. I tell you, you're talking about a team that's averaging about 323 yards per game during the regular season and they march through Florida A&M's defense the third ranked defense in the MEAC on three plays and they don't throw a pass set them up first two plays Dwayne they set that play up right there with the fake to Peterson and went to the outside going to get inside the red zone area go right up the middle and Florida A&M has to be a little stunned right now Scott Shelton is on for the extra point there are flags down that drive was just three plays, 66 yards. Myers, by the way, 47 yards running in that drive. Peterson, of course, you saw capped it off. Five of snap. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. We play the try. Our referee, Jerry McGinn. You see Paul Johnson, who is in his fifth season, 60-9 and nine at Georgia Southern. Western Carolina graduate, 1979. National Coach of the Year the last four years. He's led the Eagles to the last two national titles, five straight Southern Conference championships. Amazing record that Paul Johnson has put together here in Statesboro. Now, Shelton on for the extra point after the penalty. It's good, and it's 7-0. Scott Shelton set to kick it away, waiting. Isaac Brown and Novak Traxler. See his first action of the year, returning a kick return number 82. Brown has it. Gets down to about the 16 yard line where he's brought down quickly by TJ Anderson. And out comes Quinn Gray. Well, suddenly he's Johnny on the spot, the mighty Quinn. And Florida A&M staying in the no huddle, which gave them so much success, keeping the opposing defenses off balance all season long throughout their MEAC schedule. 
First and 10 for Florida A&M trailing 7 nothing from the 18 yard line on the ground. OJ Marchbanks over the right side for a couple. Three yard pickup goes to second and seven. Gray to the air, has a receiver open. On third and short, Marchbanks running room around the right side. Finally goes out of bounds near the 40 yard line. Well, the, Michael Ward chasing him. The pace of the offense is something that Georgia Southern is going to have to get used to. Florida A&M likes to keep the pressure on. This is a version of the fast break on the football field. This does not allow the opposing defense to situation substitute. And as you can see, O.J. Marshbanks goes outside, gets into the secondary, picks up a first down. 18 yards on that play. Ball at the 45. Gray looking to pass under pressure. Has a receiver wide open. It's Marco Junius. Touchdown, Florida A&M. There is a marker on the field. Hold everything at the 45-yard line. Wow. A killer. Oh, my goodness. We'll get the clarification from our Atlantic 10 officiating crew and referee Jerry McGinn. Ineligible receiver, downfield on the offense, five yard penalty from the previous spot, repeat first down. That's a strange call, DB, because normally on screen passes you have linemen releasing downfield. This is a straight fly pattern. I think that's got the Rattler contingent up in arms. Let's see if we can see if look if anybody went downfield a little early. Maybe on the end right there, Maybe at the very end of that play, Kevin Johnson, the junior out of Vallejo, California, might have been a little bit too far downfield. So it's first and 15. Kelsey Lordius up the middle, near the just beyond the original line of scrimmage. So they lose what would have been a 56-yard touchdown and are trying again. Lordius, who is coming off a career-high 186-yard rushing performance against Bethune-Cookman College a few weeks back in a game that clinched the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Championship. Six yards on that play. Second and 10 now at the 44 is March Banks trying to fight his way close to the 50-yard line, but the defensive unit of Georgia Southern, led by Freddie Pasquieta, is really coming up right now on this play. Pasquieta does a good job of coming up and forcing him into the arms of the waiting Joe Scott. And Scott makes a big tackle. Now, this is a concern of Paul Johnson. He told us about Florida A&M's ability to get deep. He was a little bit concerned yesterday about the wide receivers against the defensive backs of the Eagles. Third long situation here. Out of the shotgun. Gray with a lot of time to throw, decided to run. Has the first down. And is chased out of bounds, bearing down on him was Michael Youngblood. Well, Quinn Gray was tops in the MEAC in total offense this year, and he's known more as the consummate drop back passer. But as we've seen during the course of this season, Dwayne, he's even more dangerous getting out of the pocket. Now, nobody's ever going to confuse him with Alan Suver or J.R. Revere running, but I tell you, as long as you're moving the chains, and he's a load to bring down. This is a kid, 6'4", 230 pounds. Linebackers coming up are going to pay today. First and 10 from the 36. Lordius over the right side, breaks one tackle, and takes Youngblood with him down to the 32-yard line. So both offenses in the opening moments of this game are moving the ball, Coach Gray. Now the defensive coordinator is very happy. Well, that's point. because the big nasties up front, or the offensive linemen in normal parlance, are just moving people at the point of attack. Fam dude right now doing a good job blocking down, sealing folks to the inside, letting their backs get to the outside, and they're picking up good yardage. Out of the shotgun again, Gray has Isaac Brown open along the sidelines. That should be another first down for Florida A&M. Keep in mind that this Georgia Southern defensive unit is ranked second nationally in pass defense. So well, you shouldn't see that too often. Watch the tightrope right here of Isaac Brown. Great strike by Quinn Gray over the underneath coverage, right in front of the behind coverage, and a great catch by Brown, which is something he's been inconsistent with for most of this season. 19-yard pickup sets up Florida A&M first down and goal at the 10-yard line, trailing 7-0. We're in Statesboro, Georgia, opening round of the playoffs. Gray looking for yeah. Brown, mm -hmm. defending on the play was Deion Stokes. Well, Deion made a good play 
by taking the pass interference because that was the three step drop the staple of what the San Francisco 49ers have been doing. He wanted a three step drop slant pattern across the middle. Watch the left side of your screen coming right at you. Brown gets a step on the defender. He had to grab him or he would have given up six points. Classic case where the penalty was a good play in that situation because you let the defense have another opportunity. Pass interference on the defense. Spot foul. Automatic first down. So you let a defense like Georgia Southern, which traditionally does not break from the standpoint of giving up touchdowns inside the red zone, another opportunity to shut down the Rattlers. In fact, this unit has set school records for scoring average at just giving up 12 points per game and first downs allowed. So this Georgia Southern U defensive unit is one of the best, the best ever statistically the school's produced. Gray staying on the ground and he's in the end zone. Now we get an evidence of the mighty Quinn doing it by air and by land. That's power football right there. And I tell you, when you got a quarterback like Gray, who's a great field general and signal caller that stands at 6'4", 230 pounds, quarterback draw, look at him, carrying defenders, breaking tackle, and he will not be denied getting to the end zone. That's a heart touchdown right there. Big heart by Quinn Gray. Juan Vasquez comes on for the extra point. And it is all even. Lennon Nesbitt to kick away to Hakeem Ford. Ford breaks a couple of tackles up the middle. Finally goes down at the 29-yard line. Let's take a look at this Florida A&M scoring drive. Here you see it was Quinn Gray on a third and long situation, sitting in the pocket, looking, looking, looking. Nothing's there, so I'm going to take it up. Put it all on me, get to the outside. Who says this guy can't run as he picks up a first down? Gray once again, he's gonna look to the right side here, find Isaac Brown, tippy toe for the first down, and then Gray calls his own number, goes right up the gut, breaks a tackle there, breaks another tackle, and carries a defender into the end zone, and that's how fam you got right back in it. So J.R. Revere and Georgia Southern begin at the 22-yard line. Very little for Adrian Peterson on this one. No gain on that last play, second and 10. Rivera on the option, pitches out to Peterson, who breaks a couple of tackles, finally knocked out of bounds by Levy Brown, who will make a lot of tackles. Pickup of nine by Peterson, brings up third and one at the 36 for Georgia Southern. The national champs and the Florida A&M Rattlers are tied at seven. And a fumble! The pitch was intended for Dream Walden and it was loose and that is the first fumble by Georgia Southern in four games that they lose. Unbelievable. Billy Joe said he wanted to get inside Revere's head and make him think and he does just that. The pressure coming up the middle forces him to pitch early and Walden isn't ready for it. It falls off his hands through Levy Browns and right into the hands of Shedrick Copeland. And my, oh my, have the Rattlers got a golden scoring opportunity here. First and 10 for Florida A&M. Kelsey Lordius stumbles and goes down. <laughs> kind of reminiscent of what we, uh, they often talk about in Greensboro with Bill Hayesfield actually coming up to get the opposition. The down blocks had the seal to the inside, and if he doesn't lose his footing, he's probably able to get to the outside and is still running. But if ifs and buts with candies and nuts, this would be a wonderful world. Second and nine. Quinn Gray apparently changing the play at the line of scrimmage. From the 34-yard line, Kelsey Lordius over the left side, and the Eagles defensive unit closes quickly. Now, it's amazing that time Florida A&M's offensive front on that left side the entire offensive front for Florida a and DB averages like 6'2", 6'3", 302 pounds. They're going up against a defensive front that is averaging only 6'2", 248. And Paul Johnson's defensive unit is going to have to outquick Billy Joe's bigger offensive front consistently. And that's where the key matchup, in my opinion, is up front on both these teams. On third and eight at the 33-yard line of Georgia Southern, 
And there was some activity along the interior line. Both teams pointing to the other. A lot of AM seems to think it's against. We'll let Jerry McGinn and his crew sort things out. Offsides on the defense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. It looked as though it might have been Corey Middlebrooks over that left side, the left end, number 58, who might have moved. Watch him move just a little bit. He pointed at Moten, Shedrick Moten that time. But uh, he broke that plane. And FAMU has a third and shorter situation now. And now they're going to go big. See, this is a fact. This is a new wrinkle that they added for the Florida Classic, where they just pounded on Bethune Cookman. And uh, I think we got a timeout. They are two-time defending champions, so you would uh, you would uh, think that uh, they would be favorite. But uh, we must always remember, uh, in football, the best team does not always win. We're playing with an oblong object; it takes some funny bounces, and uh, we think that uh, we're in good shape. We like our chances. Who would have ever thought that uh, Colorado would beat Nebraska? You know, who would have thought that Oklahoma State would have beaten Oklahoma, or that Miami would have put 60-plus points on Washington and? 50 plus points on Syracuse. Uh, things happen. Things happen. And on third down and three, his team trying to get a first down, but the Georgia Southern defensive unit stopping them for the moment. That brings up fourth and short. Mark, the Georgia Southern defensive unit looks out of sync so far. I think they don't see the no huddle offense with as much speed as Florida A&M has through the course of the season, and they're in a period of adjustment right now. Team's a little rattled when they can't substitute as efficiently as normal. Fourth down from the 27-yard line for Florida A&M. We're tied at seven. I'll be shocked if he snaps this ball. It's March Banks with the first down. And Florida A&M continues to move the ball on the ground. Is this surprising the Eagles defensive unit? I think it is. I really, they were really concerned about the passing game, but Johnson told us yesterday if teams are running the football, they're going to have some trouble. Terry Logan does a great job, as does Kevin McCuller and Fletch Williams, opening a little bit of a crack for the powerful March Banks to take it up in there and pick up the first down. First and 10 at the 22-yard line. Quinn Gray out of the shotgun. March Banks the setback with him. Gray looking for Charles Allen, but defensively, David Young was there. Young was there, but if that ball is delivered just a little bit lower, Allen is able to make this play. This play comes right at you now. Look at look at Quinn Gray sitting back there in the pocket, fires a strike, a little high. Well, you know something, Dwayne? I got to take that back. That's a catch Charles Allen's got to make. Championship-level competition on the road against the number one team in the land. you got to make that catch. Young, a junior from Columbia, South Carolina. A couple of interceptions this season. That sets up second down, 22. 7.08 to go in the first quarter. Gray again looking to the air. Again to Allen, and David Young was there defensively, but this time the pass is completed. Well, I've been, anybody who's been watching the MEAC patches in Florida A&M games, I refer to Charles Allen as the MEAC's version of Ricky Pro. Not that fast, doesn't look like he's that strong, runs precise routes, and normally if the ball is in his area, he makes the catch. And this is Quinn Gray, the top passer in the conference, tops in total offense. I mean, he is directing at this point. What I would have to say is about as flawless a game as I've ever seen him play. First and goal from the four, Lordius into the end zone. Well, I tell you, that Kenneth Jones and Terry Logan on a trap block up the middle, that hole parted like the blue sea and Lordius takes it to the house. And I'm impressed with the Florida a &Ms, you know, mental makeup coming into this contest. You get pounded on, you give up a touchdown with ease, then you come back on the next two possessions and score. Shocking developments here early in Statesboro. Vasquez for the extra point. So Florida A&M takes advantage of the first turnover in four games for Georgia Southern and takes the lead 14-7.
Rattlers faithful, very happy, the ones that made the trip from Daytona Beach, Florida. Right now, Coach Gray, what's going on with Paul Johnson and his Georgia Southern Eagles? Well, they just got to get back to doing what they do. Uh, I still uh, uh, am going to be hard-pressed to believe that Florida A&M can win a shootout against a powerful offense like Georgia Southern. Uh, the, first, the second drive on that fumble, they were able to get inside J.R. Revere's head, make, force him a pitch a little early, and it led to a tragic situation. This Georgia Southern team normally doesn't turn the football over, and this is Quinn Gray. Look, look at that hole open up right up the middle. A great trap block right there. I mean, I got to tell you, Kevin McCuller, Kenneth Jones opened a hole, and Lordia scoots four yards for the touchdown capping a seven play 34 yard drive that only took just about three minutes. A national Cardinal scoring drive. Lordius. Get the feeling at this point in the game we're gonna have a heaping helping of Adrian Peterson now. Ford awaiting the kickoff. This one's short. That was Lordius's ninth touchdown of the season. He leads the team in scoring and touchdowns in that category. Boy, but you want to talk about killing any momentum. I mean, you give a powerful offense an extra 15 yards. Of course, the way that uh, Georgia Southern has been returning kicks, uh, they probably would have fielded it and ended up right here. There's a shocking development early on. Florida A&M 109, Georgia Southern 73 in total yards so far. Seven, 644 to go in the first quarter. Free kick. Out of bounds against Florida. Penalty will be assessed at the 35 yard line. First and 10, Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern came into this one 10 and 1, number two nationally, and as we mentioned, the reigning two time national champions, five time Southern Conference champions, Florida AM, Mid Eastern Athletic champions for the second year in a row at 7 and 3. First and 10 from the 35 for Georgia Southern. National champs trail. Revere on the option, pitch to Peterson, has room around the right side, but is tripped up. It appeared to be Sequan Dow, the corner, who grabbed him by the ankles to slow him up. But this play is set up by disciplined football from the linebackers on this play. Everybody stays at home. Let's check it out right here. Watch the entire crew of linebackers just swing outside. They take all three of the options basically away from Revere, he has the pitch too far to Peterson, and then the speed of the Florida A&M defense, led by Dow, stop him. You run outside normally, you play to the strength of the FAMU defense. Loss of one. Second and 11 at the 34. Revere keeps it himself, tries to get back up into the middle where he is met by Sean Kelly, who is a freshman and had a wonderful freshman season, all-conference performer. But Revere's numbers, 5'11", 184-pound senior from LaGrange, Georgia. Yeah, but we need to give an assist to Nakia Bynum coming up from his linebacker position to turn that play back inside so Kelly could make the tackle. Pick up of three for Revere on the play. From the 38, going to the air, has a receiver open. And it's dropped by Derek Owens, who had nothing but green in front of him. And this is a kid averaging 36 yards per catch, and he just drops it. Coming right at you, nothing fake. They, F Florida A&M buys the dive play, all the coverage inside. T Troy Hart is scorched, <laughs> and Derek Owens couldn't haul it in. Boy, he'll be thinking about that one for a little while there. Owens, 11 receptions this year, 400 yards, three touchdowns. He's clearly their top receiver, and flags are flying on the field. Florida a and probably had too many, too many people on the field. Penalties have been a problem for Florida A&M throughout the course of the past regular season. Our officials this afternoon, DB, are from the Atlantic 10. We've seen a lot of Jerry McGinn here earlier, but your umpire is Matt Aloiso, Tom Considine, the head linesman. Line Judge Lou Hammond, Brian Sullivan, side judge, Vince Bakafuso, the they field judge. Legal substitution on the defense, five yard penalty, still fourth down. That's the same thing as too many people on the field, isn't it? 
It's a more technical way of saying it, my <laughs> friend, but I'm sure you see Paul Johnson. He has also led the Eagles to five consecutive Southern Conference championships. That's unprecedented. And in a conference with Furman and Appalachian State, it's almost unbelievable. Man, I, and you know, teams like, <laughs> it, it's amazing to watch that. East Tennessee State is tough. Elon as well. Four straight one double A Coach of the Year awards. So on fourth down, Georgia Southern has elected to go for it. With the addition of the penalty, That's it is now fourth and two. Good call. You know, I like that. You got, you know, you're at home. You know, you got a high-powered offense that has seemingly been able to score at will. You know, you're just a drop pass away from tying this football game up. They give you five extra yards, you go for it. Revere and Peterson both made all-conference. Peterson, of course, All-America. Boy, 40 100-yard rushing games for number three. <laughs> it's amazing. And it could have been easily 42 uh, or 43. A lot of games this season when they had blown people out, he set in the fourth quarter. Fourth and two from the 43. Eagles trail Florida A&M 14-7. It's Peterson with the call, and, and he may not have gotten it. Florida A&M's defensive charge, led by Levy Brown coming up from his safety position, may have stopped him. I think they're going to have to bring the chains over on this one, boy. Yeah. This is close. Because he took the initial hit and bounced forward. And it's interesting as we watch them on the ground and watch this Florida A&M defensive unit against this offense because the opponents of Florida A&M have rushed for over 200 yards five times this season, and Georgia Southern is number one in the nation in rushing at 323.6 yards per game. And they held. The Rattler defense is held. So in contrast to those numbers we just mentioned, Florida A&M's defensive unit holds the most potent offensive unit in the country on fourth down. That's amazing. Watch Peterson right here. He's the first option. Dive play. Breaks the tackle of Bynum and Levy Brown right there. You see folks are voting for all Miak. This is a, one of the top tacklers in the conference. Levy Brown who doesn't make the team. Big stop there. So Quinn Gray and the Rattler offensive unit on the field at the 44 yard line of Georgia Southern with the lead 14-7. It's March Banks. And he is wrapped up promptly by Corey Middlebrooks. Florida A&M doing a good job right now spreading the field. You know, they've got the gaps a little wide right now. So with the success that they have with the receivers coming across the middle, the quick traps up the middle have been successful as well from the running game. Pick up a two for March Banks to the air. It's Isaac Brown on the reception. Aaron Whitaker stops him but not before the pickup. Toughness of a kid that they say is 5'7", uh, 175 pounds. And I got to tell you, that's soaking wet. This guy, a little quick slant, gives him a little jiggy move there, cuts back inside, and showing some toughness there. You know, Billy Joe told us last year that his team, and Isaac Brown personifies this, gives him gives them 110% every game. And that was 100%. 110% worth of a first down. Ball now at the 34-yard line. Lordius in trouble in the backfield and goes down. Eric McIntyre, first man to get to him, the nose tackle. Boy, that was a good job of just destroying that play at the point of attack. Youngblood shot right up through there and forced him to go a little bit farther outside, which ultimately ran him to the defender to stop him. Loss of two on the play. Second and 13 from the 36-yard line. Quinn Gray out of the shotgun. Under pressure, gets it away, has March Banks out of the backfield. Slightly amazing that he was able to get that ball away because Georgia Southern Robert LeBlanc was bearing down on him hard. He certainly was. And that was about the best looking pass for no game that you'll ever see. Look at Quinn Gray in trouble right here. Avoids the tackle there. Great move. 
gets it off just before the shot. Youngblood out there, coverage, stops Marchbanks. Nice looking play, probably picks up only three yards. So it's third and 10 for Florida A&M at the Georgia Southern 33 yard line. The Rattlers lead at 14-7, opening round of the Division I AA playoffs. Gray in trouble again, gets it away, has Marco Junius. Aaron Whitaker there defensively, but Junius picks up the first down and keeps Florida A&M's drive alive. Gray is down and holding what appears to be his left leg, his knee. Oh my goodness. That could be a devastating turn of events for Florida A&M. Let's take a look at the shot that he takes right here. He admires heart, his guts, his toughness stepping in the pocket. And maybe I couldn't see what happened to it. Victor Cabral in there on the pressure knocked him down. But Gray is hurting. And there's the concern of the Florida A&M brain trust upstairs. Those of you who aren't familiar with the Rattlers, it should be noted that Billy Joe, the head coach of the Rattlers, coaches from up in the press box. See what happened with Gray as Victor Cabral came down on him. And give props to Junius for hauling that pass in coming across the middle. Gray six of seven so far in this game for 78 yards. And he has been the perfect trigger man so far in this game, running this offense perfectly for Florida A&M. He owns five Florida A&M career passing records. He is number 11 in the nation in total offense. Well, Billy Joe up in the press box, the upper left corner. You can barely see his left eye as he's watching with concern. And if Gray cannot go, then you have to begin looking at number seven, Lemuel Adams, a senior, or number 18, Reggie Hayes, a junior, neither one of whom has had too much playing time during the course of the regular season. But we have seen Adams in Washington on the MEAC package this year, replacing Quinn Gray with one of the more uh, uh, exciting escape job pass plays down, uh, downfield, Lemuel himself is a transfer from Washington State University was impressed by Florida A&M's offense and he made the trek across the country to finish his college career so he is talented he might be a little rusty and uh, you just don't know how this psychologically is going to affect Florida A&M because Gray was clicking basically on all cylinders number so far today he came into this 2498 yards 18 touchdowns And I don't want to speculate, but if we don't see Quinn Gray, and this is the end of his career, I hope you folks in Tallahassee appreciate what he's given you. I mean, he's been a maligned quarterback. He's not been respected. You know, we had we had people taking pot shots at him to us right before the Florida Classic. I mean, you hate to see anybody taking off the field like that. But if this is the final play of his career, and I. Goodness knows I hope it's not. It's been a fine career, and I hope you folks in Tallahassee really appreciate number 17. They call him the Mighty Quinn. Lemuel Adams, 6'3", 200-pound senior from Sacramento, California, will now take over for Gray. Ball is at the 8-yard line for Florida A&M. Adams' numbers for the season. The Rattlers lead it 14-7. Adams staying on the ground. Gets down to the one-yard line before Joe Scott helps close him down. DB, that's the advantage that you get from a Lemuel Adams. Now, Quinn Gray can make things happen outside the pocket, but clearly the better rusher from a quickness standpoint is Lemuel Adams, and his quickness and vision give him a goal-to-go -go situation here. Pickup of seven, second and goal from the one. March Banks, touchdown, Florida A&M. Shocking turn of events. Florida A&M up by two scores, and how big was that touchdown, especially if they don't get Quinn Gray back in the game? This was a must-TD drive for the Rattlers, and they come through. Everything now has to be tempered for Florida A&M 
with the knowledge that Quinn Gray may very well not be back in this game. We'll find out more. Checking on his condition. Juan Vasquez on for the extra point. So Florida A&M now goes up 21-7, but that drive, the most of it, and the previous two scoring drives of Florida A&M were engineered by a man who is now out of the game. Well, I tell you what, Billy Joe told us a lot as we look at March Banks' toughness running through tacklers and getting into the end zone. Billy Joe speaks with great reverence about this team's heart, and he talks about how things happen. Gray's left leg is bandaged, and that certainly doesn't look good. Here's dejected. If you can read body language, that tells you what? That tells you something pretty serious, and he probably doesn't expect to be back today. I wonder if Sam has anything on the status right now of Mr. Gray. Sam Smith is checking on him. We'll check with Sam in a moment. Our national corner scoring drive, seven plays, 44 yards, 3-12. The one yard run by March Banks. But on that drive, they lost Quinn Gray. When you and I were having din dinner last night, we were talking about our personal keys. I thought time of possession would be the key. The team that r rushed the ball well and controlled the clock to this point, that has been the case for Florida AM. Akeem Ford does not receive the kick. <laughs> that is Brad Bird. Brad Bird, number 52. 6'2", 246 pound lineman. It was a short kick and he picked it up and did a fair job of returning it like a fullback. I can tell you right now, Troy Hart doesn't want to see him. Look at him hold on to the ball, right? Protecting it for dear life and then watch Troy Hart just hold on to the ball carrier for dear life, hoping to uh, bring him down. So Bird from, and look at the time of possession story right now, Dwayne. You know, almost three quarters of this first quarter Florida A&M has had the football. Much as Brad Bird would like to get credit, it was actually Mike Clark who got it to the air. Goes with Beer, has a man wide open. That's going to be six points for the Eagles. Mark Myers has the touchdown reception. Great job by Revere at selling. They looked reverse option, and Levy Brown bought it, and he tried to turn his back to get back in coverage. Myers had a step on him. Brown falls, six points for Georgia Southern, and the quick strike Eagles are right back in it. Scott Shelton on to make it a one, point, one, uh, one touchdown extra point game. So the offensive explosion continues here in Statesboro, Georgia, where Georgia Southern, a 72-yard strike from Revere to Myers, pulls them within seven points of Florida A&M with 1.45 to go. You shouldn't be surprised that Myers scored on a reception. He has, for the season, two touchdown catches. Play set up by Florida A&M looking, and you see Levy Brown right there tried to recover when he went the wrong way, lo loses his footing. Myers has nothing but opportunity in green, grass that is, standing in the end zone, and look at Revere. Yeah, man, we right back in it. Thank you, big fella. So it's very interesting here. Our national car rental scoring drive, Georgia Southern. Quick strike capability displayed on this drive. Yeah, one play, 72 yards. So let's say we've had a three play, and that's just incredible this year. 51 plays of 20 yards or more this season. Uh, but we've seen a scoring drive of three plays in less than a minute, 30 seconds. And we've seen a scoring drive of one play in Less than 20 seconds. Isaac Brown back in his on end zone will not bring out the kick. We understand from Sam Smith that Quinn Gray has a sprained left knee. Ooh. 
And those things, well, I guess they're going to ice it down to see what he can give them perhaps in the second half. But uh, burden of proof now falls squarely on the shoulders of the Georgia Southern Eagles defense. I mean, with Gray in there, and as he's rendered a spectator right now, uh, they've been able to balance. You know, what Florida A&M is going to miss most about Quinn Gray, and, you know, his stats speak for themselves. In my opinion, a legendary quarterback in the annals of Florida A&M history. But his field generalship, you'll notice checking off at the line, checking in to the right run plays. And, and a problem on the exchange between Kenneth Jones and Lemuel Adams. And you're going to see that when you got a new quarterback in there, his hands up under there, he's not quite, you know, doesn't have a real re a relationship with his center. You normally see a few of those in the early stages when a new signal caller is in there up under center. So far, Florida A&M has mixed it up 16 running plays, seven pass plays, and pretty much had the Georgia Southern defensive unit off balance. Markers are down on the... Yeah, we had a little bit of early motion in the interior of the FAMU line. I think McCullough might have moved. Snap. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Sam Smith, Mark Gray, Dwayne Ballin with you from Statesboro, Georgia. You are watching opening round action in the NCAA 1 Divit AA playoffs. Two time national champion Georgia Southern hosting Florida AM. Rattlers lead at 21 14, but they lost their starting quarterback and star, Quinn Gray, on the last series to a sprained left knee. Lemuel Adams in and his stead completes a pass to DeMar Bow. Boy, he showed some toughness there. Three guys got a piece of him. He still holds on to the football and picks up significant yardage and makes this a makeable first down opportunity for the Rattlers. And so here's where I think Adams is real dangerous from the standpoint of his ability to run with the football. That pickup of five makes it third and nine. Under pressure, Adams goes down. First man to get to him was Kevin Hurd, and then came the rest of the Eagles. Well, it's an all-out blitz. They just sell out, send everybody in the kitchen sink. As we open the second quarter, T.J. Smith out of his own end zone, the first punt of the ball game. And it's fielded by Anthony Williams who has a nice return down to the 20-yard line for Georgia Southern. Oh, man. Oh, that almighty Mo is really beginning to soar like that eagle on the opposite end of the field. Anthony Williams averaging just over 10 yards per return this season. Solid. And, you know, the, the last time Georgia Southern surrendered 21 first quarter points was against UMass. That was in the 98-1AA championship game. So you're talking about a span of 42 games before they've given up three scores in the first period. On first down from the 21-yard line, Adrian Peterson is stopped in his tracks. This is Peterson, a guy that was recruited openly and with fervor by Florida A&M coach Billy Joe. And they just weren't able to make it happen. Peterson... 5'10", 200-pound senior, 1,459 yards, 18 touchdowns, 132.6 average in the regular season. Second and 11 after the loss of one. Rivera on the option, keeps it, but he doesn't get very far because Dan Brown, Carlos Moore, rather, was there to trip him up at the ankles. Boy, that's a good play by him because Rivera seemed to have the move where he cut back up inside and Moore just uh, made a great play, forcing a third and long situation. But you know, it, it's almost like when they continue to run the option, since Florida A&M saw it against Bethune Cookman, it's kind of playing in their hands. GSU is having a lot more success throwing the football. Wouldn't be shocked to see something like that right now. 39 from the 19. Revere to the air. Peterson out of the backfield. But right there, Carlos Moore leading the way for Florida A&M defensively. Sean Kelly's over there along with Sequan Dow as well. And you know, when the pro scouts 
talk about Adrian Peterson. They like his toughness, his speed. They wonder if he can catch the football. Newsflash, the guy can catch the football. Nice one-handed catch there. And he's still a tough, tough nut to get down. But it's going to bring up a long field goal opportunity for the Eagles. Looks like about 38 yards. Shelton, 12 of 19 on field goals this season, as longest as 45 yards. This one was partially blocked, but still has enough to get there. Wow. Shelton now waiting to kick off, but Paul Johnson a moment ago was down talking rather pointedly to his offensive unit, in particular his offensive line. Traxler and Brown await the kick. Fielded by Traxler. Great play on the coverage. Boy, was it. Derek Williams. Well, you know, I can understand why. And let's take a look at this uh, coverage right here. For a minute there, it looks like Jackson had an opportunity to get to the outside, but Williams just wasn't having it. Great individual effort that time. And you know, Coach Johnson, I'm sure was really, really exercised with, with his uh, offensive front. You know, they're averaging 6'1", 276 pounds going up against FAMU's defensive line that they outweigh by about 10 pounds in mind. First and 10 from the 16 for Florida A&M. And the Georgian Southern defensive unit with young blood leading the way gets to Adams and drops him for a loss. Also had some help in there that time by see that fellow right there, number 58, Corey Middlebrooks. Very, very active. But as you can see, Florida a and offense, a little bit out of sync right now with Adams in there. Second and seven, Adams to the air, has Allen. Kevin Hurd, David Young there defensively. So they continue to move the ball, running and passing with Adams in. Safe, quarterback-friendly route. Short pass, high percentage, accurate passer, first down, Raptors. Pickup of nine, ball now at the 28-yard line for Florida A&M, which leads Georgia Southern 21-17. Again, it's to Allen. That appears to be a fumble. He was down. The officials are saying he was down. And I think that might be fortuitous for the Rattlers. That was all so close. Well, David Young is arguingly, ardently for his case. Let's check it out right here. Adam sets in the pocket in the face of the rush, gets it to Charlie Allen. And folks, <laughs> if, they're, if they're saying, I, I don't know, that looked like a fumble here. Now I know his forward progress has stopped. And, and Florida A&M, in one reporter's opinion, catches a big time break. Well, I think that ball came out before his knee hit, hit the ground. Second down for the Rattlers in two. And March Banks fights his way near a first down. That big offensive front averaging 302 pounds, controlling the undersized defensive unit, unless they're putting eight or nine guys in the box right now. Logan and Johnson and McCullough, they are lining it up, and they are just knocking the blocks off of GSU right now. Shocking turn of events here. March backs, a senior from Santa Rosa, is a long set back behind Adams, who goes through the air. And Marco Junius took his eyes off the ball. Well, what Junius did that time, Dwayne, was he tried to turn and run after the catch before he had it completely in his possession. And he's frustrated at himself. You know, he was a guy who had the touchdown call back earlier, and I think he's seeing something big. See, but Marco, oh, you gotta, you got to hold on to it before you turn up field, and you can't make those mistakes in Statesboro. Second and 10 from the 39-yard line for Florida A&M. The Rattlers lead Georgia Southern 21-17, 12-02 into the second quarter of this opening round playoff game. On the shovel pass, it was Isaac Brown, and Carlton Oglesby was not fooled. Well, when you have a drop pass where you've gotten 
significant positive yards, it kind of just disrupts what you want to do for the balance of that drive. And this appears to be set up, but a good job of Oglesby of playing off his block to turn it back inside to the rest of the pressure. And now Florida AM has a third and long situation here. Charlie Allen has been the hot receiver for Adams since he's come on for the Rapids. Adams up his shotgun from the 40. Looking for Allen, overthrows him. David Young was step for step with him. So well, that brings on the punting unit. Nice job in zone coverages. And you can see when you're rusty at the quarterback position, where it hurts you most of all is in touch passes and in reading. And what he did was he read incorrectly because that was going to be a dangerous strike for anybody. He was throwing into the teeth of a two deep zone. TJ Smith. Anthony Williams will not get the opportunity to run this one back out of bounds at the 30 yard line of Florida A&M. 11 12 to go in the second quarter of this one double A playoff game. First round Georgia Southern hopefully from its vantage point taking the first step towards a third consecutive national title. But Paul Johnson's Eagles have run into some trouble against the Rattlers. Let's check in with Sam Smith. Florida A&M fans. Quinn Gray went to the locker room, had his knee heavily taped. They fitted a knee brace on it. Just moments ago, he jogged back onto the sideline, do, did a little, uh, couple of drop back passes to see how the knee felt. It looks like he will go back in on the next series for Florida A&M. Back to you guys. Well, Revere completes a big pass for a first down to Derek Orange, covered 21 yards, and that's probably really good news for Florida A&M fans, what Sam just said. It certainly is, but what's bad news for Florida A&M is that Derek Owens is having his way, basically getting into their secondary. The defensive backfield right now is a day late and a dollar short. They're so preoccupied with coming up and run support that the receivers are having their way getting deep. Revere on the pitch. And he has running room. Jareen Walden takes it to the house. Touchdown, Walden. And you see, once again, like on the opening drive, Dwayne, they fake the dive. Florida A&M's defensive pressure collapses in the center of the field. He makes a great pitch while he gets to the line of scrimmage right here, Doug Revere. Great job pitching it right before Carlos Moore delivers a shot. And when he gets around that corner, Walden, with his speed, outruns a speedy Florida A&M secondary and takes it in for the score. 49-yard run by Zareem Walden. First touchdown of the season for the 5'9", 180-pound junior. Scott Shelton comes on for the extra point, and go, so, Georgia Southern has regained the lead. Brown and Tracks look back to receive Shelton's kick. This time it's Brown at the one, and may get out to the 12-yard line. Boy, the momentum certainly has turned here, Dwayne, and it's becoming a physical contest, and boy, Georgia Southern started laying some lumber and that, that time, Jonathan Woodham, a freshman from Leesburg, Georgia, in there to lay some lumber to Isaac Brown from Louisiana. And wow, look at the rushing yards. Uh, a, a sizable advantage right now for Georgia Southern. Look who's back in at quarterback. Quinn Gray hurt his knee earlier and back out there under pressure. And he was leveled by Freddie Pescada. Well, there was a shot after <laughs> he released that pass and Quinn Gray looked at the official like come on and he's been able to lobby to get some calls like that through the course of the conference season but again that pass looked like he was real tentative what does it mean for him to be back on the field beside the obvious emotion he lifts him up but a he's better at reading and reacting checking off into the right play B I mean he's in better concert with his receivers second and ten now for Gray and the Rattlers, they trail 24-21. We will watch his mobility. It will be limited because of that injury. That means Johnson can think about blitzing at will. Time to throw. 
has a receiver, Allen. With him was Young. <laughs> he and Young were quite close. Yeah, boy, I tell you, Young looked like he might have had a little piece of that uh, that jersey to hold him back because uh, Allen looked like he might have been able to go after that ball and haul it in. But I can tell you right now, Dwayne, early on, biggest play of the game for the Rattlers. Deep in their own territory, third and long situation, momentum on the side of the Eagles. They've seemingly been able to find the holes in the FAMU defense in order to stem the tide. Florida and m must pick up the first down here. Can the Rattlers go over 50% in third down conversions? Ball of the 14. They trail by three. Gray out of the shotgun. Looking downfield, and it throws an interception. Deion Stokes. And that's a big turnover for Georgia Southern. Well, Quinn Gray just isn't comfortable right now, and you can see that that back ankle, well, the back knee warned me that he hurt, is really not giving him the plant that he needs to deliver the strikes with the confidence that he was early in the game. And watch this. He, he's got ample time up front, sets there in the pocket, but that's his front knee, pardon me, and this is just a poor pass. I mean, he, he, his receiver was open, and he threw it behind him, and Stokes picks it up and almost turns it into a score. So the momentum that Florida A&M had before Gray's injury clearly back on the side of the Eagles right now. So the Eagles on first and 10 from the 17. Revere on the option. Levy Brown, the first man to get some arms around him. Nakia Bynum there. I did, I did. Boy, Florida A&M does a good job that time. Watch the discipline. They don't buy the fake. He showed that he was going to pass. Revere comes to the end, fakes the pitch. And that time, Copeland with some help from Brown in there to clamp down on him. But they still pick up about five yards. Second and two. Ball at the 13. And Revere is met behind the line of scrimmage by about five white jerseys. Boy, I tell you. Most prominent of the home was Stephen Brown. I'm telling you. He got, he has also some help from uh, Chris Thorpe in there on the tackle. Just got his arm around there and hogtied him to bring him to the turf. A big loss for Georgia Southern right here. See, look, number 96 is going to get that arm around the shoulder pad area and just hold on for dear life as though he's wrestling cattle. Look at him. Loss of two <laughs> and on the play. Revere just didn't want to go down. Big number 96 there. Hey, that's a big young fellow there. 6'3", 260. Third down. And things are getting touchy up the middle for Peterson. Now Florida a and m defense has been pounded on and pounded on and that time they go right up the gut to Peterson it's going to bring up a third and short situation I bet you Paul Johnson right here can smell a little blood he's going to probably go for it here on fourth down yep got a great running team solid offensive line that double slot option beginning to find its way love this call by coach Johnson fourth and one for Georgia Southern at the eight yard line Peterson, the All-American, in the backfield behind Revere. He might be trying to draw them off sides. A long count. It's Walden. This time, Troy Hart. Troy Hart stops him cold behind the line of scrimmage. Hey, Troy Hart. Troy, a lot of heart right there with a big stop. Not buying the dive, staying at home. You know, we talked this season during the MEAC schedule with coach Joe Taylor of Hampton University who preaches stay at home discipline football don't get nosy Troy Hart stays at home and he smells it out Revere didn't do really the best job of selling that play that time and Hart the all-conference cornerback as well he should have been and member of the FAMU track team makes a huge play so now back come the Rattlers on offense as Lordy is up the middle a first down. Coach Gray, what does that do? A defensive team stopping such a potent offensive unit that close to the it goal. It lifts the entire team, and you can see that fervor at the point of attack 
when their offensive line just explodes at the snap opens up a huge hole for Lordius to pick up that first down 12 yard pickup again it's Lordius on the ground Michael Youngblood on the tackle Boy, this guy is uh, a, a relentless, isn't he? Yeah, we're, we're, we're calling that name a lot. Number 41, he's a 6'2", 228-pound senior from Waynesboro, Georgia. Might uh, the term ubiquitous mean anything to you? <laughs> All over the place is Youngblood. Very impressed. 66 tackles, two and a half sacks, five for a loss this season. He and his defensive mates need to stop the Rattler offensive unit on this one if they want to continue on towards another national title. Second and eight for Florida A&M from the 25. Gray to the air has Isaac Brown for another first down. Well, the timing. And he beat Deion Stokes on that one. It's the timing, you know, and that's what Quinn Gray is giving them. You can talk leadership, you can talk emotion, talk whatever you want. Comes down at the snap of the ball to make the read quickly, set up in the pocket, deliver a strike to your receiver, timing route. Gulf Coast offense when you're passing, a lot like the West Coast offense in National Football League, all about timing. And if you're just off, the play won't work. Pick up a 10, very tight formation for Florida A&M. The Eagles are ready for March Banks. Corey Middlebrooks down at the bottom of that pile. David Young also on the stop. I got the feeling that was a, a, a jab to set him up for a haymaker or something. You know, uh, they had been spread out. They go big on first down, a jumbo package, something that's normally tight that you see in either short yardage situations or near the goal line. And they do it out here near the 35 yard line. Second and 10 from the 35 and it's Lordius. He should have another first down. And this time, you got to give big time props. That right side, Kevin McCuller, Kenneth Jones, and Fletcher Williams do a good job of sealing to the incident. Look at him right there. They just get a pull job from Terry Logan that time, and he's just going to pick his hole, explode. And I told you, in the opening of the game, he's a punishing runner. You step up and try to tackle Lordius or Marchbanks, you're going to feel it tomorrow morning in the training room. Pick up of 11 on the play. First and 10 from the 46. Gray looking to throw. He and Marco Junius were not on the same page on that play. Junius was turning as Gray was throwing long, and there's a marker down near the 50-yard line. Junius clearly was expecting to run a go route or a fly pattern straight toward the end zone, and uh, Quinn Gray was looking for him to go out. Infraction called against Florida A&M. Tripping foul on the offense. 15-yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's a big penalty. Mm. Borderline devastating as far as this drive is concerned. Defensive unit. Stopped Georgia Southern inside the 10 yard line on fourth down. And Turned the ball over. You just saw Jimmy Joe get clarification on what the infraction specifically was. So it's first and 25 from the 31 yard line for Quinn Gray and the Florida AM Rattlers who trailed Georgia Southern 24 21. Gray out of the shotgun. Has Charles Allen across the middle, who gets near the original line of scrimmage. Actually, DB, he's up close to the first down. Boy, that Charlie Allen having a big first half here in Statesboro, Georgia. Nothing fancy about his little route there. He's out there one-on-one, -on -one, going to find a seam down the hash marks, breaking on a bit of a post pattern, a strike. And I like the way he catches the football. You see, a lot of guys let the ball get to their body. He has his hands out, waiting to receive the ball, makes a big play. 24-yard pickup. On second and short, Lordius picks up the first down over the right side behind those big bodies that Coach Gray was speaking of a few moments ago. Oh, you got to love those big nasties. Got to love them when they're getting out front and doing that job. And that's how I like my offensive line. Big with a nasty strength, looking to hit somebody. 
That's why they're big nasties. First and 10 from the 39 yard line for Florida A&M. Gray, ball too low to Isaac Brown. And you know something? He raised his hand to his uh, receiver out there, goes, Ike, my bad. The GSU defensive line, 6'2", 248 pounds. Gray, 6'4", 240 pounds, senior from Fort Lauderdale. He and the Rattlers have the ball at Georgia Southern's 39-yard line on second and 10. They trail by three. Out of the shotgun is Gray. Has Isaac Brown, but it was in and out of Brown's hands. The dilemma that has faced the Rattlers for the balance of the season, you've had penalties, missed opportunities, and dropped passes. And this is a strike by Gray that's delivered almost right to the number two on that jersey, and Brown doesn't haul it in. Remember we are talking about on the previous reception, Allen's hands being ahead of him. That time the ball got to Brown's body, no catch. Third and 10 from the 39 for Gray and his Rattlers. In trouble, gets it away, and is thrown out of bounds. Marco Junius was in the general area. Johnson and his team have talked about things. No one back to receive the punt of T.J. Smith. It will roll into the end zone. The Eagles will take over at the 20-yard line. Three yards on the return. On first and 10, at their own 36, the Rattlers. Quinn Gray to the air. That ball was nearly intercepted. David Young was in front of the receiver. And that was a bad read by Quinn Gray that time. They, too, showed him blitz, but they dropped back into a 3-D. And watch, see, they're showing him one thing, looks like pressure, but they drop, and then he's gonna look into an area, you got three defenders. He's fortunate that pass wasn't picked off. Seam routes in the center of the field, Florida a and having their way all day. Outside, it's been a dogfight. Once again, from the 36-yard line for Florida a and Gray out of the shotgun. Has a receiver, has a first down. That's Lordius out of the backfield, taking defenders with him. You know Kelsey Lordius must be hanging out with the great FAMU receivers. Excellent at running after the catch. And this is beautiful to watch because of the discipline after he catches the football. Watch, Quinn Gray does a good job selling that he's looking deep, looking, dumped it short right there to Lordius, and he's just gonna just wait Gets a couple of blocks to seal defenders to the outside. He crunched back to the near side, picks up the first down. 22 yard pickup on it. Ball at the 41. And Marco Junius adjusts to the ball and makes a great grab inside the five yard line. Florida wow. AM is knocking at the door with 250 to go in the second quarter. 37 yards on the play. It was a physical battle deep downfield. And Junius just wins it. Now, I'm not quite sure he stayed in bounds all the way through, but that's just a great job of adjusting on the fly, climbing the ladder, and then going up above Chris Brown, the cornerback, and making a huge play. Junius is 6'3", 185 pounds, in full use on that play. First and goal from the four. Gray rolling to his left, looking in the end zone, and has Lutu, the tight end, for a touchdown. Well, who knew what Lutu could do? Obviously, Quinn Gray does. Wow! And there's the contingent from Tallahassee with something to smile about. And the mighty Quinn has given his team a lift. Lutu's third touchdown of the season. 6'2", 240-pound junior from San Diego. Falmalo Lutu. Juan Vasquez, who is perfect for extra points so far, which is no small feat considering the travails he's had this regular season in that category. And Florida A&M regains the lead in what is clearly a seesaw game. Four plays, 64 yards, 48 seconds. Well, this is Quinn Gray off the play action fake. 
it works because Lordius was so effective. Great touch pass, and Lutu, one of the more underrated offensive performers in the MEAC, frankly, because he doesn't get a lot of touches, but he just makes big plays. I mean, we've seen Lutu on numerous occasions this year with big touchdowns. Do you think Billy Joe is on the phone saying, I'm glad you're back? Yeah. <laughs> How's that knee, Quinn? You going to be around for us for the entire second half? Yeah, coach. I'm feeling good now. Okay. Keep it going. 234 to go before the half. Opening round playoffs, Division I AA, Georgia Southern, two-time reigning national champion, is being tested by Florida A&M. The Rattlers lead at 28-24. That national car rental scoring drive, four plays, 64 yards, less than a minute, and Mark's favorite, Mr. Lutu, with the reception. Get him the ball. Just get him the ball. It's something about Quinn Gray inside the last two or three minutes of the first half. A light goes on, and he's just like all world. It's amazing to watch the efficiency of this offense at the latter stages of the first half. Weekly. Nesbitt's kick. This time, Akeem Ford has it and goes down at the 23-yard line. That's where Georgia Southern will take over. Out comes that bone that they run, but Adrian Peterson, they have work to do. They trail it by four. But the success, a great measure of the success that GSU has had today has been passing the football, and I still think that Revere will be able to have success getting the ball down the field if his receivers can hold on to it. His numbers in the air, very solid today. First and 10 from, they're on 22-yard line. The national champions trail by four. On the option, it's Myers, and he's escorted out of bounds by Sequan Dow. Yeah, that's a play that earlier on the first drive, Myers went for about 40 yards, and. Sequan Dow gets credit for the tackle, but look at the discipline of the linebackers to just string it out. You see Bynum forces him to make that pitch a little bit farther outside than he wanted to, which allows more pursuit to come up. And again, Florida A&M doing a solid job defending the rush, although the Eagles do pick up five yards. Myers came in with 440 yards rushing and three touchdowns. Junior from Powder Springs, Georgia. On second and three, it's Revere with the first down and more before he's grabbed by Shedrick Copeland. That Revere just makes plays. The engine that goes, and you know, he's disciplined and just does a good job of reading. See, again, they do a good job taking Myers out. He's that pitch guy. So what does Revere do? Take it up inside, run the, run the football. He picks up the first down. 16-yard pickup. He's second on the team in rushing. Has 14 touchdowns running this season. Averages 80.2 yards rushing. He's going to the air. Has a receiver open, it's Willowden. Right over the middle, a little bit of a slant pattern. You have, you know, this is just great offensive play calling and wonderful execution. You know, you have some success running so you can fake the dive. That's going to allow the pressure to come up inside. Once again, they go over the top of the defense to the soft area and in the center of the field. Walden hauls it in, and now Georgia Southern is knocking on the door. A 31-yard pickup. Just like Coach Gray said, the Eagles are doing it on the air in the big plays. Peterson, no go up the middle. Well, you know something? Billy Joe told us yesterday, if we wanted to stop Adrian Peterson, we could stop Adrian Peterson, but then guys like Revere and Myers and Walden would, would step up and play big game. Guess what? They stopped Adrian Peterson, but the other guys have stepped up. On second and six, Eagles try to go up the middle again. Peterson met by Nakia Bynum. Peterson now has 44 yards and 16 carries, and Myers is in trouble. Well, Florida and m did not buy the dive. Great pursuit, continue to string that play out, and the defense, once again on third and short, makes a huge play. 
think Paul Johnson has a fake package? See, look, the pressure, the linebackers string it out, and the quickness of the DBs coming up to make a huge play. So that brings Shelton on, fourth down. 35 yards out. And it's good. It's a one-point lead now for Florida A&M. 28-27, 22 seconds to go in this opening round playoff game from Statesboro, Georgia. One double-A playoffs. Coach Gray, are you surprised? I'm worn out. <laughs> I need some oxygen after this first half myself. Man, I, I really am. And I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmingly impressed by the game plan of Florida A&M. Well, we talked to Coach Joe yesterday about the very thing you mentioned about taking on Adrian Peterson and the strategy against him. Well, he's a great uh, football player, but he's probably a better person. Uh, I think that uh, I could never say enough good things about him, uh, not just football, but in the community and school and everything that he stands for. And uh, he'll be a tremendous success when he leaves here. That's Coach Paul Johnson of Georgia Southern, obviously speaking about Adrian Peterson and everyone we've talked to, to a person has said what a wonderful young man number three is. We all know he'll be in the NFL next season, but boy, they say he's a special human being. Even Billy Joe said that in the recruiting process when he said he called him a, he called him a sweet, uh, a sweet young fellow from a good family. That's six flags over Georgia, ladies and gentlemen, as in six national championship flags, not to be confused with the uh, amusement park. Isaac Brown elects not to return Shelton's kickoff. Florida A&M will take over at the 20-yard line with 22 seconds to go in the half and a one-point lead over the national champs. Quinn Gray injured earlier in the game. His knee, he went down. It appeared as though there was a great question as to whether or not he'd come back. Lemuel Adams replaced him for a few series, but Gray has come back and has settled this offensive unit down again, and this has been back and forth with no one taking control. You're absolutely right, and I think Florida A&M, who will get the ball coming out to start the uh, second half, probably gonna take a knee, go in, fine-tune their game plan, make some adjustments. Which knee will Quinn Gray take? The one without the brace. <laughs> Great first half, man. He got me in the second half now. I don't know if I can take another first half like this. Shelton set to kick away to Isaac Brown and Novak Traxler. Third quarter is underway, and it's Brown fielding the ball at the five. Oh, my. Excellent coverage on the play by Derek Williams, but there is a flag down. He just broke Florida A&M's wall by himself to make that stop. Referee Jerry McGinn and his officiating crew talking things over. Officiating crew coming from the Atlantic 10 for this game. Legal block in the back on the return. Half the distance from the end of the run. First down. So Florida A&M opens up with a mental mistake. Yes, indeed. Those are the kind of things you cannot afford to have in the second 30 minutes of a first round playoff game on the road against the two time defending national champions. And it should be noted, a point we haven't made. They've only been competing in the one double A championships since 1978. Did you know the team that won the first NCAA Division one double A championship is Florida A&M? That is right. Opening play of the second half from Statesboro, Georgia. Florida A&M leads 28-27. Quinn Gray injured in the first half, came back, and has led this Rattler team to the lead. Can they finish it out? Ball at the eight-yard line. Lordius, who had 48 yards rushing in the first quarter, picks up three running to the outside. Boy, they go off tackle to the right side and great seal blocks to the inside by McCullough and Fletcher Williams. 
spring him to the corner, and he picks up a first down. Now, what adjustments do you anticipate if you're Paul Johnson, first of all, making to this offensive unit? Well, if Florida a is going to try to establish the run outside, you got to force him back up the middle into the strength of your defensive unit. And that's the point I'm making, Dwayne. You turn Florida A&M back up inside against the Georgia Southern defense, advantage Eagles. They closed on Lordius. Freddie Pesquieta leading the way, number 44. See, this time, the guys aren't able to quite pull and kick out that time. LeBlanc in there first with some help from Youngblood and Pesquieta. Second and six. Gray looking for DeMar Bow in and out of his hands. Chris Brown there defensively. Now, DeMar, you might be able to get away from that team and, uh, you know, uh, get away with something like that in the conference. You know, if you're at Norfolk State or something like that, you're not going to get too many opportunities against Georgia Southern. Got to make those easy plays. Third and six at the 24-yard line. Opening series of the third quarter, and Florida A&M faces a key down. Gray from the shotgun. Looking for Isaac Brown, who I'm not even sure knew the ball was on its way. Well, they had that flood over on the far side of the field with both Brown and Charlie Allen. Both had turned inside. Pass goes back outside. Florida A&M stopped basically three downs and out after picking up their initial first down. So the GSU defense steps up big to start the second half. T.J. Smith, fourth punt of the afternoon, kicking away to Anthony Williams, who's waiting at his own 35-yard line. And he sends Williams back. Nice punt by Smith. Williams is a burner. Excellent coverage for the Rattlers by Chris Gilchrist. Boy, wasn't it? I mean, he, he, he too. And there, there's a shocking statistic. This is the only time, the, just the second time this season, that Georgia Southern has uh, trailed at the half. 52-yard punt by T.J. Smith. And, you know, when a team runs a, a double slot option, you don't think of them as a comeback team. But, you know, this, this, this offense just rolls at will. Wouldn't be shocked to see Revere air it out a little bit more here in the second half. First down for Georgia Southern. Eagles' first possession of the second half. On the ground. On the Oh, wow, that was that first, that, that dive play. Looked like maybe Peterson might have taken it that time. Nothing fancy. This is straight dive. Same question as on the other side. Now, if you're Florida and M defensive unit, what adjustments do you make? I think you stay with the base game plan. You've got to continue to mix up what you do out of your base looks. Second and six. Nakia Bynum and company respond quickly. And as they close on Peterson. You know, there's a little wrinkle right there. That time, I think Biner might have been lined up at the middle linebacker position, number 52. And he's going to swing. Why, as soon as Peterson gets it, he's waiting in that B gap and just stops him right there. Peterson, 12 rushes for 49 yards so far in this game. So Bynum and the rest of the Eagles, de Rattlers defense, doing a better than admirable job containing number three. Rivera looking to the air on third down, has time to throw, looking for Derek Owens, overthrew him, and Levy Brown leveled him. Wow. That was a pass that I'm sure Rivera wishes he had back because the receiver had run a nice route, had a step on Levy Brown, high pass, incomplete. Eagles have to punt. So both defensive units hold on the opening drives of the second half. Good protection up front, a strike. He found a nice little soft area of the coverage. Better pass. Chains move, Eagles would have kept the ball. Scott Shelton back at his 20-yard line, punting away to Levy Brown, who's at the 24 of Florida A&M. Shelton with a high kick. Brown fields it in the 25. Up the middle, has a bit of running room. But I'll tell you, Derek Butler was there quickly. 
Quinn Gray has done a really good job running the offensive unit for Billy Joe's Rattlers. First and 10 for them at the 32. Lordius, the man we just spoke of, has running room, takes about four players with him, and still is not down. Very near first down. The recipe for success to this point, and they have kept Mr. Peterson in check with only 50 yards. But as they say, it's still early. Joe's Rattlers, second and one at the 41 yard line. March backs. If he got it, it was on effort because Robert LeBlanc was determined not to allow him to that first down marker. Well, that's about the first time this afternoon, Dwayne, that up front Kenneth Jones gets absolutely no surge at the point of attack. So when your center is stopped, it allows guys like LeBlanc to come back in there playing with the bad foot is LeBlanc. He's an interesting story. Get back to it in a minute. Third down, the dive should be good enough for the first down to continue the drive for Florida A&M. And continuing with that story about Robert LeBlanc, this is a guy that's been playing for the balance of the last two seasons with a broken foot. Now, there's no, there hasn't been any surgery involved. We haven't heard anything about any screws being planted in his foot. He gets intensive therapy and is just out there as a relentless warrior each and every day. Great character on these two teams. Oftentimes you get a matchup like this. You have two teams full of characters. These two teams have great character individuals. Marchbanks dive good enough for a first down. Keeps the Rattler drive alive. 11.28 to go in the third quarter from Statesboro, Georgia. Florida a 28. Georgia Southern 27. And DeMar Bowe could not get to that one. A little high from Quinn Gray. Yeah, and Quinn Gray made the right read that time. He found the hot receiver who was Bo, who had found a seam, and he just couldn't get the ball to him. You spoke earlier when he came back from the banged up knee about it affecting him. Do you see him adjusting to that now? Yeah, he, he, he looks like he's found a way to play. I don't know if he's in pain. I don't know what his threshold is right now, but you look at those numbers. 50% passing, only one INT, one TD. I mean, a solid effort thus far. Well, he has the Rattlers second and 10 at the 42-yard line. See, that's what they get most from the ability to check off at the line, DB. Freddy Pesquieta was bearing down on him, knocked him down, and it was all that he could do to get it away. And he still gave Tamar Bowe with that pass a reasonable chance to catch it. But look at Pesquieta, number 44, the pressure doesn't allow him to set up. So uh, consequently, it's not an accurate pass. And now the crowd here, it's a great crowd. So far in the second half, great is zero for four passing. See, it's a great crowd. This Close games like this, you get an edge from your 12th man. Third and 10, still at the 42 for Florida A&M. Georgia Southern's defensive unit so far on this series has really stepped up. Gray appears to be changing the play out of the shotgun. Looking long. And there is a flag down. Deion Stokes is hot, the defensive back. Well, Junius tried to make an adjustment on the football. And Stokes looked like he had pretty decent coverage. Let's watch it all the way right here. Top guy is the hot man in the route. He breaks in. Stokes has great coverage. A little bit of a, uh, a, well, you know something? He never turned his, I don't know. <laughs> That's a tough call. I, I, I'm going to leave that one alone, big fella. Woo! Stokes. interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Yeah, you can understand and understand the uh, reaction of Paul Johnson right there. Well, that's a tough call. And that's a tall order for Deion Stokes, considering. Yeah, he's 5'11", and Junius is 6'3". In any, any event, Florida A&M with the penalty now has the ball first and 10. At Georgia Southern's 42 yard line, leading by one. Gray yet to complete a pass in the half, does so right there to Isaac Brown. Well, Isaac, a tough, scrappy receiver out of Baton Rouge, gets off the line, runs a short route, out pattern, and the accuracy of Gray with him. 
See, a little half drop. Nothing fancy about what they're doing, but the offensive line is giving great, great protection. A high pass that time. You know, if that pass is a little bit lower, it gives Brown an opportunity to make a move and perhaps continue on down the sidelines for significantly more yardage, if not a touchdown. Very close to a first down. Matter of fact, they're bringing out the chains to measure. Mark, how much of a factor does heat become here? Because it is very warm today it, in, it is in Georgia. Yeah, it's extremely humid, but you got to remember, when you practice in August in Statesboro and Tallahassee, <laughs> this is a, your average fall or spring day. I mean, it, you know, I, I don't think these two teams are going to have a problem down the stretch dealing with the humidity and the way it saps your body of energy. If a team had been coming down, say, from the northern end of the MEAC, such as uh, the Hamptons or North Carolina, a and might be more of a factor than it is uh, for Florida A&M. That pass play to Isaac Brown, good enough for another first down for Florida A&M. Ball now at the 32-yard line of Georgia Southern. 11:02 to go in the third quarter of this opening round Division I AA playoff game. Gray looking to throw under pressure, gets it off looking for Brown. Ball was off the mark. Deion Stokes was step for step with him. It was a hitch and go route. And Isaac Brown ran the hitch. Quinn Gray pumped, brought it back down, went back after him one more time. Junius pointed at Gray saying, you know something? I was out there one-on-one. -on -one. Nobody was going to stop me. So don't be shocked if they, after that little eye-to-eye -eye conversation, if you will, go back at each other. Is there a sense that the game has somewhat slowed down from the first half pace? Uh, we'll talk about that in greater detail after this play, but I think you're absolutely right. Second and down, ball still at the 32-yard line. Gray under pressure, and he goes down. Carlton Oglesby. Well, that's a bit of a coverage sack, coupled with a missed assignment, because Quinn looked right. I think he was going, excuse me, he looks left. And I think he's looking for Junius, but Junius runs into a three deep zone. So as he tries to double clutch and make another pass, the pressure's back there to sack him. And now it's third in the country mile for the Rattlers. But you made the point about the game slowing down. It's often like a basketball game where teams are running up and down the court in the first half. In the second half, it becomes a half court game. Looking at the version of half court football right here. And the Eagles fans at Paulson Stadium are on their feet, exhorting on the defensive unit on third and 21. Gray looking long. Marco Junius out there against Aaron Whitaker, and Whitaker nearly comes up with the interception. But again, that pressure from Pesquieta once again, forcing him out of that comfort zone. Watch 44 is going to come, I believe, from the left-hand side of your screen. There he is right there, forcing it's not accurate, and Quinn Gray fortunate that that pass is not intercepted. Anthony Williams back at his 10-yard line awaiting T.J. Smith's punt. Smith angling for the corner, and this will be a touchback. Several players on the sidelines are saying, this is our game. This is our game. Dwayne and Mark, these guys are now smelling it. They expect to pull this thing out. Well, it starts with belief. Then it, you add a couple of breaks, and you see what happens. Myers on the option, has a first down. More to Sam's point just now, we had that feeling in talking to Coach Joe that he was quietly confident. Exactly. Exactly, it was a cautious optimism, and you know, you can tell those non-verbal cues, but that time, uh, Georgia Southern does a good job of trying to get some of that momentum back on their side, faking the dive, going to the pitch to the outside to Myers. You know, that's the play out of the double slot that was so effective in jump-starting their offense in the first half. That 12-yard gain leads to a first down at the 32-yard line for Georgia Southern. In motion is Walden. Revere reverses field, gets away from the Rattlers, but on the other side of Sequan Dow. And, and, and you know something, DB? 
He tried to outrun Troy Hart. Troy Hart's a member of the Florida A&M track team. There are a lot of fast guys in Florida. You ain't going to outrun Troy Hart. Now watch this. Number nine in blue is going to come down here, makes a great play to reverse his field because of our big nasties like Brown and Nakia Bynum. So watch. Troy Hart is just going to track him down and set it up for Dow to come up and finish the play. Great team defense by two guys in the secondary. Hart is now lined up. Hard earned two yards for Revere. Second and eight on the 34. It's Peterson. He has running room. Biggest run from scrimmage of the day for Peterson. That was just simply the staple or the bread and butter of Georgia Southern's offense. Watch this hole open up in the middle. Great kick out block right up front. Charles Clark with some help from Reggie Cordy open up the hole. Peterson finds that hole. Explodes into the secondary, big first down. That 21-yard run by Peterson moves the ball into Florida a and territory with 8.22 to go in the third quarter. There he goes again. The record setter puts Georgia Southern ahead. 45 yards by Adrian Peterson. Well, AP. You got to give credit to the big nasties up front once again. Nasty kick out block by Charles Clark. Josh Jones finishes it. Once he breaks into the secondary, no containment there. Touchdown, Georgia Southern Eagles. And hey, you got to go back to where your bread is buttered. He's not the all time leading rusher in the history of college football for a reason. And that's why. He is now over 100 yards for the game, rushing 115 to be specific. And in just two plays, and they're going for two points here. You're right. That was just an efficient drive right there. And you know, like I said, Dwayne, coming in, admirable defensive strategy by the Rattlers, but you keep pounding on them, pounding on them, pounding on them. If they've got eight in the box, you know, once you break containment, it can be a devastating turn of events. And uh, that's what has befallen the Rattlers today. Leading 33-28, Georgia Southern going for two points. Ford, number 20. Revere to the air. It's knocked down by Troy Hart. They did it with big plays from the man. For a four play, 80 yard drive, 45 yard touchdown run caps it, but he had picked up 21 on the previous drive. So, uh, hey, it's late in the ball game. You got a stud like AP, give him the football, let him carry you to the promised land. And on that drive, that's exactly what he did. Their longest drive of the day so far for a touchdown, 80 yards. Isaac Brown fielding the kickoff at his one. Stutter steps his way to the 17-yard line. Well, let's check out Adrian Peterson showing why he is well, the greatest runner in the history of college football, he explodes into the secondary. You have to give the big guys up front major props for the hole that they open, and he takes it to the house, giving his team a five-point lead. And the question now becomes Florida A&M. We've seen themselves pick themselves up off the deck already. Can they do it again? Well, it's up to that man to lead them. Quinn Gray, Adrian Peterson. The stars are out for both teams in this one. Gray so far in the second half, one of seven for 10 yards. Lordius on the ground over the left side, has room outside, a first down. Yeah, now that time the whistle clearly blew. There's no doubt about that. Now the 12th man around here is extremely exercised, but I sit down on that one, folks. And there is an injured eagle at the 35-yard line. Well, that's the person that tried to, I think it's going to get credit for the tackle. And the ground clearly caused the fumble that time. No doubt about that one. And Lordius off tackle has been bread and butter. That's David Young, the junior defensive back, 6'2", 205 pounder from Columbia, South Carolina. He probably just got his bell rung a little bit, trying to bring down a 200 pound back. Watch this little hop right here by Kelsey Lordius. And that's what springs him into the secondary. And you see Young come there, get his legs out from under him, but he pays the price. I mean, his 
physical running backs in this game. I mean, if you're coming up and run support to try to bring March Banks, Lordius, Peterson, or Myers down, you're going to pay the price. Lordius now close to a 100-yard rushing game. That pickup sets up a first down at the 38-yard line. Quinn Gray taking his time, surveying the defensive field. This is what he does best, adjusting. Lordius delay, and he changed directions, picked up a sizable piece of yardage. That's discipline and, and vision. I mean, the discipline to wait for the play to develop in front of you right here. See, look, he's just going to wait, 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 find his hole, pick it, and then explode. Nice move right there on into the secondary and a gain of about five. And that put him over the 100-yard mark for the game. That seven-yard pickup now gives him 101 yards. So it's second and three at the 45-yard line. O.J. Marchbanks, no go. Michael Youngblood read it perfectly. Still having a big game. I'm telling you. He is all over the field. I mean, you just got to find where number 41 is and get a hel helmet on him every play. 6'2", 220 pounds, 228 pound senior. Loss of one on the play. Third and four now for Florida A&M at the 44. Remember, the Rattlers now trail. 33-28. Lordius this time, Georgia Southern's defensive unit says no. Well, that's a case where I think Florida a and went to the well one time due too many. And Lordius is having a big game. You know, you check the record books. Georgia Southern is only 42 and 38 all time when an opposing back rushes for 100 yards or more in a game. There are two games below 500 during the Paul Johnson era when that happened. So we'll be monitoring that for the rest of the afternoon. T.J. Smith's kick away to Anthony Williams. And Williams calls for a fair catch at the 15-yard line. He and the Eagles at the 16-yard line. And Revere looking to go to the air. Has a receiver open. T.J. Anderson with a huge pickup. Well, he just gave, I believe, Troy Hart a move at the line of scrimmage that just shook him out of his shoes. And once he doesn't get that chuck, he, he just breaks into the open area and makes a huge play. It's a great play call. Watch, 28 is out there one-on-one -on -one against Troy Hart, who misses the chuck. And after that, he's just burned. And a big, big pass play for the Eagles. 45 yards for the freshman from Lithonia, Georgia. Ball now at the 39-yard line of Florida a and and there goes Peterson again. Carlos Moore desperately pushed him out of bounds, but he had a lot of momentum. Well, you can see it right now. A great mix of play calling by Paul Johnson and company, and the offensive line up front for Georgia Southern beginning to oppose their will in this game. It's a trap, off tackle. He cuts right inside, then goes back to the outside. Levy Brown loses his footing. If Carlos Moore isn't able to shove him out of bounds, he's probably still running into the end zone for the score. Paul Johnson's Eagles pick up 26 yards on that run by Peterson. This is the double slot option personified right now. Now at the 14-yard line of Florida a and Peterson seemingly in gear. Peterson. He and Alex Fortson met each other pad to pad, helmet to helmet. It's the first time we've called Alex Fortson's name this afternoon, and this is a guy, you know, they forced the pitch a little bit farther outside. Fortson in pursuit makes a good play. You know, Fortson and Joe Sanders both were banged up in the Bethune Cookman contest, both spraining ankles and uh, haven't been as big of factors as normal in this contest, but he makes a big play that time. Peterson now with 100 yards rushing in the third quarter alone. Second and six, ball at the 10 for Georgia Southern. Leading by five. This time, Fortson. 
along with Shedrick Copeland stops and you mentioned Fortson Fortson has a bothered has been bothered by an injured ankle there was a lot some doubt as to whether or not he'd even play today yes Peterson's numbers are just well in the second half this third quarter alone 102 yards it's amazing to watch this kid is, is, is the strongest toughest running back I've seen in a long time third down Walden and the Rattlers take him out of bounds that's huge now does Johnson roll the dice here and try to run again with his defense playing so well on a fourth down situation or does he send his field goal kicker out well, Scott Shelton number 40 is coming out he's the field goal kicker so well Dwayne we've seen a whole lot of riverboat gambling coaches this year it's a great time for a fake I mean, if you got fake in your package right now with the momentum on your side you're looking to de deliver a psychological blow and Revere is the holder here Shelton two for two so far in field goals make it three for three so he adds three more on to the Eagles lead it is now 36 28 Georgia Southern leads Florida A&M by eight points and they want to add a seventh national championship banner to what you see there and this is the first step on that road yeah you don't see too many conference championship banners around here they only hang the national championship right it's kind of like in the old boston garden or the forum in los angeles where the lakers used to play you look in their rafters there were no conference championship banners it was all about the bling bling for those of you who are cool and fair that means championship that directed at me i you know just want to help a tacit dig at me no i'm not no i wasn't digging at you i simply dig you you my man Coach Billy Joe in his eighth season at Florida A&M has guided the Rattlers to four Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference titles, one of three 1AA coaches with 200-plus victories, once was a stockbroker, very erudite man, three degrees he possesses, told us that the country was definitely in a recession a while back before we actually heard it from the officials. But he also said if you're an investor, invest. The stock market will come back. The kickoff by Shelton. Fielded by Brown at the six-yard line. Oh, ball loose into the hands wow. of Georgia Southern. Kevin Hurd, that's six points. Well, Isaac Brown has been taking shots all day. I mean, big-time sticks. And at 170 pounds, he takes a shot right here from a Howard sort that of just basically blindsides him, and the ball goes into the air. And wow, just watch the shot that Isaac Brown is going to take right here. See, it's set up, and then Watts coming out of boom. That's a shot from Jonathan Woodham, who lays the wood, and then at Kevin Hurd it intercepts the ball out of the air, takes it to the end zone, and Florida AM seem to have dodged a bullet, and they give it right up. Mm. Don't have six national championship banners for nothing here in Statesboro, do they? Shelton adds the extra point. And now the fans at Paulson Stadium confidently on their feet and cheering with 3.32 to go in the third quarter. Their Eagles beginning to assert a bit of power. Well, Woodham gets helmet right on the football and right into the hands. And he just walks into the house does Kevin Hurd. And I guess that man Paul Johnson right there breathing a little bit easier than he was about 45 minutes ago. When we talked to Johnson yesterday and we talked to him about the accomplishments, their goals are very definite. Their goals here in Statesboro are national champions. Exactly. Starts with the Southern Conference. And that's right. Austin Stadium is their house. It's the second fumble return for a touchdown this year, but I guarantee you the first one couldn't have been anywhere near as big as this one. I mean, that's that's one of those kind of emotional plays that can suck the life out of a team, and it's going to take a lot for Billy Joe and his coaching staff and these players from Florida A&M to get themselves back mentally in this contest because with 18 minutes of playing time remaining, they can still come back. Shelton's kickoff will be fielded by Brown again, right back into the fire. 
This time he gets out to the 26 yard line. Well, that kind of renders Lordius and Marchbanks almost meaningless at this point. Quinn Gray is going to have to assume the reins of this offense. He and Charlie Allen are going to have to try to move the ball down the field uh, via the air. I think Allen becomes hot. Junius has been able to get open against anybody who's been checking him. Gray's just got to be accurate and confident right now. So the Rattlers' hopes are squarely on the shoulders of number 17, their record-setting quarterback. On first down, under pressure, steps up. He's going to run. And ah. Isaac Brown just delivered a heck of a block on Michael Youngbud, who was about to lower the boom on Quinn Gray. And there are players down at the 15-yard line. There are two Eagles, two Rattlers, a lot of collisions on this play. I don't know what happened in the center of it, but Terry Logan is down over there. And I think that might be. Well, check that. That's not Terry Logan. Second and four for Florida A&M at the 34. The Rattlers now down 43-28. Little over three minutes left to go in the third quarter of this opening round. One double-A playoff. Quinn Gray to Isaac Brown. The pass was high. That pressure coming up the gut that time from Pesquiera again. He and Quinn Gray are becoming a little bit too familiar with each other. And I'm not quite sure that's something that Billy Joe likes. Well, Pesquiera came in with 103 tackles, second on the team. He's only 6'1", 250 pounds. But Coach Johnson told us he has one motor, one motor. Right. He goes constantly, goes all out. Fifth gear at all times. Third and four. Ball at the 34-yard line. Most of those numbers from the first half. He's passed very little in the second. Knocked down on a blitz by Chris Brown. Hey, that's just a creative offensive play call. You know, they must have been looking for Quinn Gray to go towards Brown or Bo in the slot across the middle. So they bring a corner off that side, which is where he wants to go. And he throws it basically into the hands of Brown. Great defensive performance here after the intermission by Georgia Southern. Of course, when you get a gift touchdown like they did on that uh, change of possession, it really, really relaxes you and you can play a lot more aggressive. T.J. Smith kicking away from Anthony Williams. And that takes a Florida A&M bounce down to the 11-yard line for Florida A&M. So now, if you're Georgia Southern, do you have Florida A&M right where you want them? Of course. Yeah, and, and now you just feed AP. Just feed him. He came ever so close to touching that one, didn't he? <laughs> wow. I'm sure that was a little bit too close for comfort for Coach Johnson. 54-yard punt by T.J. Smith. Ball at the 12-yard line for Georgia Southern. Paul Johnson's Eagles now beginning to roll up yardage, but Florida A&M not far behind. Lots of offense in this game. Alex Fortson right on Peterson. We have 800 total yards of offense in this game so far. I told you, and I'm still waiting for the auction tank to get up here to keep me going. He's, hey, these two teams have rolled up and down the field, and there's Gus. Now, in your days as a defensive back, could you have played in a game like this? Yeah, probably seated on a bench with a baseball cap on a uh, sucking down Gatorade. <laughs> Pick up a one on the play by Peterson on second and nine. Revere on the option. Nice move to break free. Nearly loses the ball, regains it, has a first down, and is pushed out of bounds by Troy Hart. J.R. Revere. Wow, the Eagles are coming. The Eagles are coming. Watch JR get to the outside. Great move there. Hits the accelerator. For a second there, it looked like Copeland was able to strip him. He regains possession and carries it down in for a big first down. 25-yard pickup by Revere. Mm. Nine rushes, 49 yards. So suffice to say, uh, 
they win another cha championship, you'll be revered here in Statesboro almost as much as you Adrian didn't, Pearson. You didn't actually say that, did you? No, I didn't say that. I don't know who that was. First down, Revere going to the air, looking for Derek Owens. Troy Hart knocks it away, and there is a marker at the 30-yard line. I wouldn't be shocked if that's uh, offensive pass interference because the offensive player initiated the contact for the separation. Troy Hart's in good coverage right now. Watch number nine in blue loft the strike in the air after taking a shot. And number nine in white makes a great play to get his hand up there after being pushed off. That's a good call. The 12th man doesn't like it, but a great piece of officiating. That's why these guys are in the playoffs. Pass interference on the offense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Well, first and a mile isn't quite as daunting a proposition for a team like Georgia Southern because of its big play capability. And, you know, you think big plays, you often think of, you know, vertical passing, and they've, they've shown the ability to get deep on Florida A&M, but they're just as dangerous with, a, with an option as well. Penalties about even in this game so far. So it's first and 25 from the 23-yard line of Georgia Southern for the Eagles. Revere on the option, pitches to Walden. And he very nearly has the first down. May very well have it. They run the option so well here that first and long, third and long, the option is just as effective as any passing play. Revere fakes the dive to Peterson, draws the coverage inside once again, makes the pitch at the last minute to walk, who explodes outside, cuts to the sideline, Levy Brown there to track him down, but not before he picks up another Eagle first down. Picked up 26 yards of his 45 yards rushing on that play. Ball now at the 49-yard line, close to getting into Florida A&M territory, are the Eagles. Peterson met by white jerseys and green pants. And getting up slow that time was Alex Fortson. You know, the middle linebacker dinged up just a little bit. And Vladimir Shafir now in there making a big play for Florida A&M. You know, you look at the Florida A&M Rattlers defensive front. They're beginning to labor just a little bit. You know, hands on hips, guys bending over. That's a sign, Dwayne, that the big nasties wearing blue and white are slowly but surely, surely, pardon me, wearing the Rattler front seven down. Pick up of just one by Peterson. Second down. Revere on the option. Fake the pitch to Walden. Levy Brown didn't really bite. Neither did Shafir. Yeah, but to his credit, Revere is still able to pick up about six or seven yards. Master field general. I mean, you know, the way he runs this option takes me back to the days when Donnie Little was at Texas, when Thomas Lott was at Oklahoma, you know, Tony Rice at Notre Dame. I mean, this guy is, is, is just as good. You know, he, hey, let's, let's expand it to Georgia Southern. Tracy Ham. You know, when Irk Russell was here in the hand bone, I mean, this is just efficient execution by a, the, uh, a field general personified. Time called down on the field. Third and two at the 43. Revere under pressure, he goes down. Boy, Carlton Moore coming off the blitz from the corner from his outside linebacker spot. <laughs> he beat J.R. Revere back before he could get set up. I think that was about a four-step drop. By the time he gets to the fourth step, Moore picks up his fourth sack of the season. And this is a kid with the FAMU High School in Tallahassee. And man, that's how you get acquainted with the opposing quarterback if you're a linebacker. Loss of seven. And we are through three quarters in Statesboro, Georgia. Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia. Paulson Stadium, Bryant Field. Georgia Southern leads Florida A&M 43-28 as we begin the fourth quarter of this opening round one AA playoff game. Scott Shelton's punt fielded by Isaac Brown at the 15-yard line. There are markers down. 
It's amazing to watch the, the special teams coverage, which has not been talked about at all today. But Georgia Southern has done an outstanding job in punt and kick coverage all afternoon. Florida A&M has earned everything that they've gotten with the exception of that fumble early in the first half. They haven't been able to take advantage of any of the talents of Levy Brown or Isaac Brown from the kick return standpoint. Legal block in the back. On the return team, half the distance to the goal. First down. So Florida A&M will start in deeper territory than it would have had it not been for that penalty. Let's see. Right there. And that sprung him for about a two yard game. Let's check in with Sam Smith who has one of the legends of this Statesboro Georgia area and a legend would be an understatement Dwayne Irk Russell led Georgia Southern to their first two national titles coach you got to like what you see out of this year's Eagle team. They're doing great of late but not so good early. Both of them are great backs. We saw Herschel play on Sunday and we'll see Adrian Peterson on Sunday too. How far can this Georgia Southern team go? Can they win the third straight national title and do the one thing here at Georgia Southern that you may not have done? Well, I did win three. And when I left, we won four. Now they've won two. And yes, they can if they'll win one more game. There you go. Irk Russell telling it like it is, as he always has during his days here at Georgia Southern. Dwayne and Mark, back to you. Thanks, Sam. That man is a legend. In these parts. You know, uh, Dick Vitale uses the term for great coaches who are builders of programs is Michelangelo. This is Michelangelo of 1AA football. You're talking about consummate builder of a program. Six flags over Georgia 85, 86, 89, 90. And then there was that long drought of nine years between the last two back to back titles. There, there, there are places that have never seen a national championship. Now you'd have thought the sky had started falling over those nine years when they hadn't won one. Russell was the man that got the ball rolling, had the legendary Tracy Ham as his quarterback. Ham and Adrian Peterson, two jerseys that are retired here at Paulson Stadium. Third and four for Florida AM at its own 14 yard line. 43 28. They trail. Quinn Gray, the shuttle pass. To Lordius, who has a first down. Well, you know, the difference in this game, Dwayne, is that when Florida AM runs the football and they have an opportunity to make a big play, the Georgia Southern defense is able to ca catch up to Lordius. See, big hole right here on the shuttle, shovel pass. And if he has a little bit more acceleration at that point, uh, he's probably continuing to run after the tackle by Nick Kearns. If Adrian Peterson or Myers gets into the secondary, they take it to the house. 14 yard pickup as you watch Charles, Charles Allen on the reception, but maybe more importantly, limping on the sideline was Kelsey Lordius as he went to the bench. And that is a player on today that they can ill afford to use to lose, pardon me, most of uh, most of all. And those, that's the defensive unit of Florida AM right now. They're hoping the offense can score so they can get back out there and clamp them down. Lordius limping away after his last carry. Six yard pickup by Allen on the reception. Six, second and three at the 36. Gray overthrows the receiver. That's a pass that you call a medicine ball. It's high, <laughs> and your receiver has to extend himself to catch it, and he could need some serious medical attention if Gray lays him out like that too much longer. Well, Dennis Bonga is 6'5", and he really had to step up and reach. It appears that so far in the second half, Gray is off the mark. Yep, he's just lost that little edge, that little finite edge that he had prior to his injury. Third and three at the 36 yard line for Florida A&M. Gray working out of the shotgun. Tries to run, but the first man to get a set of arms around him was Corey Middlebrooks and the rest of the Eagles joined him. And they were just sort of laying in wait for Quinn Gray off this drop play. It's almost as though they're expecting a shovel pass or something. Gray calls his own number, 
young blood in there leading the first charge and then the cast of thousands to finally haul him down and getting credit for the stop will be Middlebrooks, but he ought to give half of that stat uh, to young blood once again. And we'll see T.J. Smith hunting away to Anthony Williams. Williams calls for a fair catch at the 25 yard line. So Williams obviously was content to just haul the ball in and now, you know, we, I made the basketball analogy at the beginning of the quarter, at the beginning of the third quarter, I should say. Uh, now you can look for a version of the four corners. And how do you play four corners football? You just pound on them. And I think that the defensive line of Florida A&M is getting a little bit fatigued right now. And the front seven has to do the job of stopping Adrian Peterson because once he gets into the secondary, he's been able to outrun Florida A&M all afternoon. 39-yard punt by Smith gives the Eagles the ball at the 25-yard line. Revere going to the air and going long, looking for Derrick Owens. And with him defensively was Troy Hart. Those two have been battling today. And Hart finally wins one. You know, jaw jacking just a little bit. Hart blazing speed, legitimate 4-3 guy. And he shows makeup speed right here as Revere releases this pass, puts a little bit too much air under it. If he leads his receiver a little farther, he gives him a better opportunity to make that catch. As it stands, he gave Troy Hart the opportunity to break on the ball and deflect it. Hart came into this one with a team Tying high of four interceptions. He and Sequan Dow both have that. On the option, Revere is nailed by Nakia Bynum with help from Alex Fortson. And Sean Kelly was in there on the stop as well. And I think that's the young fella that's uh, down on the turf right now. Sean Kelly back up. And limping. Yeah, this freshman, 13 sacks, all conference first team, and wasn't even the rookie of the year. And he's a little gimpy. You see, a lot of guys wearing white jerseys, you know, came into this game banged up, have been playing on relentless heart. But take beatings and the beating and the beating on of these big guys up front. Ultimately, it's going to wear you down. It's third and 11 for Georgia Southern. Despite everything that's gone right for them so far, they are 0 for 9 in this situation. Yeah, but when you three plays and you score touchdowns. Revere nearly loses the ball, regains it. Scrambling out of bounds, and they are now 0 for 10 in third down conversions. He is a master at improvisation is J.R. Revere. I mean, watch this. All right, he's going to come and look one direction. There's pressure. It looked like he lost the football. Regained his composure and almost picks up the first down or just individual effort. You mean to tell me there's not a place on the next level for a guy who is as athletic as J.R. Revere? Well, he's 5'11", weighs 184 pounds, and really hasn't been asked to throw the ball too much. Can you make him that proverbial third down specialist coming out of the backfield? He's taking some shots. Well, you certainly can't measure determination and heart. Right. They don't They don't have a test for those. They've got the Wonderlick test that allegedly touches your intelligence. I don't know how intelligent Mr. Wonderlick was, but that's a topic for another show. Scott Shelton running away to Isaac Brown, who loses the ball and recovers it. That was a dangerous decision by Brown. That fellow is pleased that the Eagles lead. Glory is his name. And one might say the glory is all on the side of the Eagles at this point in this contest. Florida A&M, Charles Allen on a reception. And his forward progress was really stopped by Nick Kearns. He started so well, and I think they forgot that Charles Allen was on the field because there haven't been too many passes in his direction. We've seen him try to go to Junius and Bo and Isaac Brown, but he's been Mr. Consistency today. First down on that play, and it's an interception picked off by Aaron Whitaker. 
And that may seal the fate right there, Florida AM. That's a fast Queen Gray whistles he had back. He led Charles Allen just a bit too far. And by leading him too far, it goes right. That's just a great pickoff right there by Deion Stokes, a sophomore from Peachtree City, Georgia, not that far from Atlanta. And he made the folks proud with that one. And there's Quinn Gray, who's kicking himself right now. So Georgia Southern gets the ball back, and there goes Revere on the option. What moves? Mm. That's a bad man. <laughs> oh, Glory even likes that. <laughs> Mr. Revere, look at him, keeping the burden of proof on himself. Paul Johnson must, must have gotten in his ear and said, JR, I want you to carry me. And this time, you know, you got a lot of players slipping and sliding. It's been raining here. You know, it was real must, uh, mucky yesterday with the humidity and whatnot. And the turf is real loose. And Florida A&M has had problems with traction all day. 24 of his 79 yards on that last play. Very little up the middle for Peterson. Who, say for the third quarter, has been kept in check. But like Billy Joe told us yesterday, yeah, you may keep Adrian Peterson in check, but you got to worry about Revere and Myers and Walden. And all of those fellows have burned Florida A&M at one point or another this afternoon. Second and seven at the 10-yard line for Georgia Southern, leading 43-28. Revere. And this time, Carlos Moore hangs on to bring him down. Boy, you know, those guys up front, though, it should be noted that when you're giving out props for today's game, you got to start with James McCoy, Josh Jones, Charles Clark, Reggie Cordy, and Bubba Brantley, that, which is a great name, I might add, for a football player. You talk about what's in the name. Bubba Brantley says offensive lineman. I mean, give me a bunch of guys like Bubba Brantley on my offensive front. I might be able to win a few games. Okay, we're in that third down conversion territory again. Georgia Southern zero for 10 so far. And under pressure, Revere throws it into the ground. So now they are 0 for 11 in third down conversions. Well, that Troy Hart been all over the place this afternoon. Once again, he was the person. Now watch, coming from the right side of your screen, you're going to see number nine in white. As Revere gets to the outside, he has to release it a bit early because he could feel Troy Hart. And it's a one-hop grounder that's incomplete. Scott Shelton on for the field goal. Perfect three for three today. That's four for four. He adds three more. It's been a game of fireworks. Boy, it has. And here in the second half, the fireworks have been only on one side of the field, and that's Georgia Southern. This is why you have six national championships and are knocking on the door of a seventh. Kickoff was short and handled. Johnny Todd, a freshman running back out of Gainesville, Florida. Big game in Gainesville this afternoon, or this evening, I guess, would be more apropos, would it not? Florida and Tennessee. And these fans. Feeling a little more comfortable. This game opened up with both teams going back and forth, answering, answering, answering. We had 55 points at the half. And Georgia Southern, with Adrian Peterson running, has asserted itself in the third quarter. Quinn Gray is intercepted Pesquia. by Pesqueda. And that's a touchdown for the All-Conference. The All-Conference nose tackle. Well, <laughs> you, you, you'll understand if the nose tackle just basically holds on to the ball because you don't have it off. A great play. He just stays disciplined. Instead of committing, he stays at home to take March Banks out of the mix. Then it becomes a foot race to the end zone. Touchdown. Gave him a different look. Confused Quinn Gray. Made a bad read. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. And it looks like the Eagles are on their way in defense of their title. 
Well, when the defense scores, that's a sign. Shelton on for the extra point. And now the total is mounting for Georgia Southern. 52 points. Take a look at the 6'1", 250-pound junior from Hackworth, Georgia. Well, it's just about, you know, discipline right there. Staying at home. He was in pass coverage, taking Marsh Banks out of the pattern. He steps in front of him, hauls it in, takes it to the house. Only fitting that with, you know, he's been all over the field. So sooner or later, uh, Pesquero was going to get into the end zone. First half, second half, a tale of two halves, definitely, for Quinn Gray. The mighty Quinn in the first half, and need, looking for Dr. Quinn in the second. And there's Gus. <laughs> He's got a rattler in his hand. <laughs> That's still a dangerous animal to have that close. <laughs> I don't know, but if you got him around the neck. So, Quinn Gray, how much of a factor did that injury play into what happened in the second half, taking nothing away from Georgia Southern's defense? I think it was a lot more with uh, Georgia Southern's defense. Kind of, well, the offense of Georgia Southern swung it. They forced Florida A&M into passing situations, and when the defense can go ahead and come out and call signals knowing what you have to do, they're at an advantage. And, I'm, you know, he, he showed that he was mobile enough and that uh, there was nothing wrong with his arm in the second half. Um, no, it's just a championship caliber effort after the overtime. I mean, the intermission. And the kickoff. A nice piece of running by Edward Baker on the kickoff for Florida A&M. Warming up on the sidelines. As you see, Quinn Gray dejected. Billy Joe is who he was speaking with probably, his head coaches. Up in the booth, there he is, peering his head out. That's where he always coaches from. Told us he feels most comfortable, that he can see the field from there. And maybe Quinn Gray is coming to the realization that his Florida A&M career is over. Now, you got a guy that, and Lemuel Adams is going to step in up under center, but look at a guy 6'4", 230 pounds, who can throw the football fairly well, um, pretty mobile. Somebody will give him a look at the next level for sure. Lemuel Adams goes down, and so do Markers. There's a ball on the field. And off to the races is Michael Youngblood. But just wait a minute. Remember, there was a flag. It was thrown by the referee. That's normally in the general direction of holding. Well, if that's the case, then Georgia Southern's defense has just scored six more. Yep. The floodgates have opened here in the fourth quarter in Statesboro. 12 quick points by the Georgia Southern defensive unit, and Paul Johnson has to be pleased. Well, let's take a look at it right here. Adams hadn't been in the lineup long enough to feel the pressure in the pocket, takes a lick, falls on it. Well, the ball was just landing on the turf. Youngblood Johnny on the spot. He takes it into the end zone. Now he gets a, a defensive score. Piscata gets a defensive score. You know, they're just opening it up now. These guys are going to begin to expect that they're going to score. Everyone's going to want to turn on that defensive unit. A 33-yard. 60 to 28 is the total now. 33 unanswered points right. by Georgia Southern. Traxler elects not to return Shelton's kick. And the Florida AM Rattlers trailing 60 to 28. Will take the ball at the 20 yard line. Lemuel Adams comes out, so Quinn Gray apparently is done for the day. The record setting quarterback for Florida AM. And they're the defensive players for Florida AM. He played so well in the first half, but remember, you know, you get you give up 14 points uh, uh, right off the special team. Well, four, you had a special teams goof off for a touchdown. You had a couple of a fumble return for a touchdown and an interception return for a touchdown. That's 21 points scored by the defense in the second half. Ball at the 20. March Banks is quickly grabbed and brought down by Derek Butler. Butler limping a bit. Scoring by quarter, it was back and forth, the first two. 
Georgia, Georgia Southern just opening it up here in the second half. Wow. And it appeared early on that Florida A&M was going to uh, actually be able to hang with them. But as I said, Dwayne, I didn't think the Rattlers could win a ball game. It became a shootout. Second and 11. Adams forced to run. And once again, he's met by Mr. Butler. There's another relentless guy all over the field. Think he's kind of laying out there trying to get a touchdown himself. That's the number of the afternoon. Third quarter was when number three did it. Third quarter was when number three got off and perhaps just perhaps it's the start of their third consecutive national championship run. Very resourceful using the number three there. I'm impressed partner. That segment was brought to you by the number three. And it's third and six at the 22. Lemuel Adams rolling to his right. As a receiver, Marco Junius, but right up under Junius was Drek Cooper. Well, you know something? Junius makes a tough catch in that situation. If he had made an easier one earlier on in the, in the half, perhaps Florida a &M is, uh, has that second drive of this quarter uh, continuing, and you never know. Like we always talk, ifs and buts. Junius's reception good enough for a first down. Adams, no doubt about it, he was keeping it on the play fake. And he ran right into a sea of blue jerseys. And Butler is right down at the bottom of it, 43. Well, these guys just don't have an off switch. Well, that's what Coach Johnson was telling us. You know, everyone on this team knows to take care of its job, to take care of their job, and you don't stop until Coach Johnson says you stop. Right. Now the question becomes, will Coach Johnson be back next year? I mean, you know, here a job coming open at Navy, uh, Mississippi State. I mean, this guy, you look at his numbers, and they're just so gaudy. Second down from the 34. Adams again into the open field, has a first down, and is whacked pretty good. There's a quarterback draw with Adams just going right up the middle. You know, it's suddenly become one of the staples of this new look Gulf Coast offense. Man, he takes a shot from your your friend, Derek Williams, replacing David Young at strong safety. So we got a lot of substitutes in there right now. Adams to the air. Pass is complete. Drek Cooper was covering on DeMar Bow. But I was talking about uh, Paul Johnson. And I mean, it's just amazing when you look at the fact he's got five straight Southern Conference championships. Uh, this senior class has won 50 games coming into this contest. Uh, what more what more can you ask for a coach in terms of credentials? I mean, he's been national coach of the year in the one double A level for the last four years. I mean, he's got the Eagles in two straight national championship games. Uh, 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 60. He's getting ready to become 61 and nine in five years. It's amazing. And he's really one quarter away from having already won three championships. Take a bad quarter away in the, champ in the finals his first year, that team rolls. And his defensive unit is trying to limit what Florida A&M is doing with a little over five minutes to go in this game. Outcome clearly in hand. It's amazing that, you know, you look at their conference mark under Johnson. They won 36 of 40 games in the Southern Conference. Now, when you look at what happens to a team like Oklahoma at Oklahoma State, you know there's so many potholes in conference games that it's amazing that they could be that efficient. Adams to DeMar Bow, who gets down close to a first down before he's stopped by Aaron Whitaker. Now it is obvious that the season is coming to an end for Florida A&M. Rattlers, we thought they were out of the conference race about the middle of the season. They come back and they win the title again. It, it speaks volumes about the pride in that program. I mean, there's a lot of pride in football in Tallahassee on the other side of the city. You know, everybody seems to talk about Florida State, but it's a storied tradition of football at Florida A&M, where Florida A&M was the number one team in town before Bobby Bowden got there. March Banks with a carry for another first down. And it's amazing that this team, frankly, at Florida A&M, 
was not one of Billy Joe's most talented teams. They just gave him everything that he asked for, and that's why they were conference champions this year. You know, he's gonna he's gonna go out find himself a quarterback. He's probably gonna have a couple of fast receivers who can make big plays. Find himself another running back. They don't rebuild at Florida A&M anymore. They just retool. First down, Adams rolling right, throwing towards the end zone. A great catch by Marco Julius, and that's down to about the two-yard line. So Florida A&M close to another six points. I'd like to thank the media relations directors from the respective schools, Tom McLean from Georgia Southern, Alvin Hollins from Florida A&M. They really helped make this an easy week for us to put this together as you take a look at Junius's great catch. Yeah, it was a physical battle down there. He just climbs the ladder and hauls it in. He's been able to do that a lot in this contest. On first and goal, Marchbanks powers his way into the end zone, so the senior has another touchdown. Well, that's impressive because Florida A&M really could have just packed it in. You know, guys got to want it now. Granted, you know, a lot of substitutes, uh, second, second string players in there on the GSU defense. But after a demoralizing quarter and a half the Rattlers could have just sucked it in hey that, that's an evidence of pride and the, the heart and the character that Billy Joe talked with such reverence about when addressing his team well we've certainly enjoyed this 2001 MEAC season with you the executive producer of MEAC football all season has been Johnny Tice today's game produced by Rick Lindzik directed by Chuck May associate director Mark Shoemaker statistician Mark Holland stage director Lisa Pelicano we have one of the most talented groups headed up by operations manager Keith Green here. And we have enjoyed bringing you these games. The extra point by Vasquez is good. Cassidy here is 18,000. Had a nice crowd on hand for this afternoon game. Close game for the better part of, well, for all of the first half. And in the third quarter came the explosion led by Adrian Peterson of Georgia Southern, who had 106 yards rushing in that quarter and it's been all Georgia Southern since then and the Eagles will have the ball at the 27 yard line now let's check in with Sam Smith Wayne and Mark we all know how the events of September 11 affected our lives but for headlinesman Tom Considine he was right in the middle of all of the chaos he was in World Trade Center one when the first plane hit at about 8 a.m. that morning, he was able to get out and then witnessed the second plane hit World's Trade Center Tower number two a few moments later. Now, Considine, meanwhile, didn't know it at the time, but the pilot of the second plane that hit the world, the second World Trade Center building happened to be a guy that lived in Considine's neighborhood. So he definitely has a new feeling on life. Back to you guys. Wow. That just puts everything, DB, into comparison right here. I mean, into perspective. That's a ter ter terrific story. Uh, you know, I'll never forget that day because, you know, I'm in the Washington, D.C. area driving in the direction of Capitol Hill. And from the direction I was coming, you know, you could see smoke after the plane had went and flown into the Pentagon. Great story, Sam. New quarterback in for Georgia Southern, Chaz Williams, 5'9", freshman. And there's there was a turnover. A turnover, and Florida A&M will get the ball back. Chris Thorpe apparently came up with it. As long as you don't quit, you always got a chance. And the Rattlers haven't quit. Let's see, probably a, a little. Well, the, that was just a situation where the running back just didn't hold on to the football. Got to also give props to a number of the other folks of our outstanding MEAC TV crew this year. I mean, they have certainly made our jobs a whole lot easier. Mule Adams is on number, picks up maybe five. Got to give props to David Grain for handling our audio all season. Great, the best stat man in the business, Ali Cater for my money. Infinite operators, David Rose, Rhonda McDaniel, probably watching us back in the nation's capital area. Second and seven. Adams to the air. Charles Allen has it short of a first down. Also want to thank uh, the sports information directors throughout our conference as well for hooking us up. 
namely Patricia Harvey at Hampton University, Kia Mason at North Carolina A&T, especially Ed Hill, my man at Howard University. Well, Over 1,000 total offensive yards in this game this afternoon. That's a staggering statistic. It really is. Thanks to Lamont Germany and Joe McIver at Morgan State as well. And thank you for putting up with me. <laughs> that's a, that's a, tough, a tough job there, guy. And you, 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 you don't even have any gray hair. It's been a fun season, partner. <laughs> it really has. Can't wait to tip it off for basketball season starting January 19th uh, from Tallahassee when the Bears of Morgan State new head coach Butch Beard take on the Rattlers of Florida A&M. Their head coach, Michael Gillespie. Two J. March Banks on the carry. So did it really go the way you thought it would go this season? And as, yeah, we all hey guys, enjoyed it. It's been real. Hey, you guys are the best. You know, we, we would certainly be nowhere without you. Well, did the season go the way you thought it would go, Mark? Actually, I thought coming into the season that Bethune Cookman was going to win it. And uh, Florida A&M beat them, and I, that kind of shocked me. I thought that with Alan Suber and the talented players that BCC was bringing back, that it was basically their championship to lose. And basically it was. And when they got to the Hampton game, they could escape that. They probably would have won. They didn't. And you've really got to give credit to Florida A&M coach Billy Joe for keeping this team together. Nobody talks about the injuries and the rebuilding nature that this team was in. You know, they're going to retool, fine-tune some things. And... Don't you guys in Tallahassee give up on the Rattlers just yet? I think they got to run in a national championship in them within the next two or three years. It's Coach Joe, Coach of the Year in the conference this year. Another fine job by him, as Mark just mentioned. And the question, you don't want to talk about coordinators who could um, step up and have a head gig sometime near soon? Billy, uh, Billy Joe's brother, Jimmy Joe, I'm hearing his name associated with a lot of people wanting to talk to him now. Now in a quarterback is Trey Hunter as Paul Johnson tries to get as many players on the field as he can involved in this game. Blue bottom, along with Troy Hart at Florida A&M round out the secondary. Williams back in at quarterback looking to throw. Levy Brown defending against T.J. Anderson. Georgia Southern now will be punting away as Shelton kicks it to Brown. A fumble, and it's recovered by Georgia Southern. Jonathan Woodham, who's made some large plays on special teams, comes up with a loose ball. Well, it's been that kind of half for the Rattlers, and uh, that's almost, I can't say fitting conclusion, but you know, that's just a personification of just all that's gone wrong for Florida A&M today. Well, at least in the second half. I'd like to also say on behalf of all of us, we are very honored to be a part of the last game of Coach Willie Jeffrey's story career, which we brought to you from Orangeburg last week. That was something very special, and all of us here are just really feel special to have been a part of it. Coach Jeffries, from everybody, thank you if you're watching. Thank you so much for what you brought to the game of football. Yeah, the conference certainly won't be the same without you, big fella, and uh, don't be a stranger. I suspect we don't have to worry about that. On the pitch. <laughs> Levy Brown again. <laughs> there's no quit in that guy. Kevin Davis trying to get around him. And there's a kid that has, that has had to uh, overcome a lot of adversity in his life, so you know he's not going to quit. Quickly, you think this team goes on to a third consecutive title? I certainly do. That's the, I mean... On this level, toughest out in college football, Georgia Southern. They do two things that all championship teams do well. They run the football and they stop the run. And when you got a Peterson and a Myers and all those other talented players and a Revere, a field general, all the ingredients are in place. And most importantly, they've won it twice. That counts big in games like this.